Come on now, people. I've been telling you for almost two years now, you need to have a GNR TV. And now sports are back. Football is back. Now is the perfect time for you to get this if you don't have it already. And if you look on over here, as I've been telling you before, you get all these amazing channels, every single one of them, for $20 a month for two devices. And if you look on up over here, it's written. It's written everything you get with GNR TV. If you want four devices, $40. And there's some cool extras right here. GNR TV, streaming done right. If you don't have it, get it. What more can I say? What more can I say? It's time to cut the damn cord, stop being ripped off by the dish and cable, and get this lovely thing we call GNR TV. Streaming done right. Let's get slicing and dicing with Sir Sturdy Horror fans. On this podcast, you will hear me and a guest do some movie reviews, random funny horror chats, and whatever else comes to mind. So tune in, kick back, relax, and always remember, I'll see you in your nightmares. Well, this Jason's mask. Yeah, I'm just gonna hit yeah. we're recording now. And the movie we're doing today is Let the Right One In, which is similar to, um, is it called Let, Let, Me, in. Me, Let Me In? Now, oh. I don't know if this came out first or not. This one was from 08. Let Me In, I'm not sure. I feel like it was older. It might be older. But yeah, this is a foreign version. But it's basically the exact storyline. It's very, very similar. Yeah. And I, I will say this, though, yo, like, I need to watch more foreign films. Me too. I told you, man. You get surprised. The subtitles did not bother me in this movie. It was easy nope. to follow along again, as well as um, the last one I watched was Train to Busan. But it was like easy to follow along, and it just like the story went, and you kind of, I mean, to an extent, you kind of know you kind of needed to know what they were saying to an extent, but at the same time, you can kind of just watch and kind of figure out like what's going on through the thing. Like, yeah. For example, what was his name Oscar the boy? And Ellie was the girl, or Eli? Yeah, Ellie. Yeah, Ellie and I think you call her Ellie. Ellie, yeah. It was spelled E-L-I, but I think it's Ellie. And yeah. This movie's Swedish. And, like... I was going to say that, because you th at first you thought it was... Uh, French. French. And I was listening to this, and I was like, this is not French. I was like, if anything, it's like Russian or something. <laughs> but listen, I was way off. I was... Well, <laughs> again, because, like, as you know, we're, we're working from home now, right? And I was yeah. thinking to myself, I was like, you know what? Because usually I'm listening to either like um, a podcast now, like at home, I'll just, I have Spotify and my fire stick downstairs, so I'll just put that on and listen to a podcast or like something on YouTube or a documentary or whatever the case may be. Like I, I finished the Jordan doc today, finally. No, no, I didn't even start that. It's on Netflix. It's good. No, it, I know. I heard it's good. I, I watched, really uh, I listened to a podcast that we're talking about. They said it's like crazy good. And it, it's actually, and we grew up in, I mean, I know we were young in the era. I know you're a couple years older than me. We were still kids in the era. But, like, you kind of relive it. You kind of remember yeah. it. Like, I would love to see a Tyson. I know they made a few, but I would love to see a Tyson documentary, like, with him narrating it now and kind of talking about it. Like, similar to the way the Jordan doc was, I would love to see more documentaries made in that way to where you have – because you had, like, his teammates, some of his coaches, the GM. Like, you had a lot of people that were involved in, the, in that era. And then – the following era, it's like the Kobe era, it's rest in peace to Kobe, and like the LeBron, you know what I mean, you have different people and different athletes talking about him, which I thought was cool, and as well as Jordan. Yeah. But yeah, it's, it's definitely worth a watch, or even worth, like I said, I listened to that whole documentary, I listened to it a few, a few episodes last week, and I finished up, because it's 10 episodes, so I listened to most of it last week, finished it up today, I had like an episode, maybe an episode and a half or something like that, two max. <laughs> But it was great, and it's one of those things where you can listen to it, and you don't have to watch it to know what's going on, because obviously it's just all talking. I mean, you might glance yeah. in there at certain things. Yeah. You could just, like, listen to it. It was great, and people... Like, like a lot of interviews. It's like, yeah. you don't need to see it. Like, exactly. they're sitting there, they're talking to Pippin or something. And I I've, I don't know what it is about that stuff, yo. Like, I've always, and even as a kid, I've always enjoyed, like, listening to certain interviews. What it's, what it's somebody you're interested in or somebody you're a fan of. I love listening to like every single interview I can listen to of them or every single documentary I can 
listen to or, you know, watch about them. Yeah. And it's another good one, so I definitely recommend it. And I actually started one today, and there's only four episodes. It's on BET, but I, I watched it with the fire stick, of course. Uh, no Limit. Master P. Oh, yeah. That, you know, that's still, is that old or is it still going? No, it's new. It's called No Limit Chronicles. Oh, and he had a show, No Limit, on BET before. He probably, he might have. It was him and his son. Uh, what's his face? Little Romeo? Yeah, there you go. Like, a, was it like a like a sitcom type of show, or was it like a reality? It, I think it was like reality. It was like just following them two around. I know. I he, think he, what I can recall. It's years ago, though. Years oh, okay. ago. Okay. Like little know. Romeo is like what 105 now. I don't even know. He's younger than both of us, still. <laughs> I don't, I don't fucking know. Right? Master P. I think it was like 16 or 17 when that shit was going down. Like when he came out singing. Yeah, but uh. This documentary is pretty good. It's really good too. And you just see how intelligent he is, like from where. Oh he no, I I heard he has like a high IQ. He's and like financially, people talk about rich as far as hip hop goes. This dude is so smart because I don't want to ruin it, but pretty much he got into music just because he wanted to get his family out of, out of a bad situation. His big dream was playing in bat, playing for the NBA, which he did play a few games in the NBA for the Charlotte Hornets, oh, which wow. is crazy. And then like all his business ventures, like when you watch it. Like he's, they said that, um, I'll say this last thing when we get into the horror, but in the documentary, there's, you know, like there's a lot of movies that go straight to, well, straight to video. He was the first one to do a movie that went straight to video with his low budget, um, no limit. Nice. I don't know what they were called, but that's, that's awesome. And it's huge. Cause it's just like a lot of movies are doing that now. Like a shit ton to the point to where it's like, it's not even bad anymore. You know what I mean? Like some mm. back in the day, people, oh, it just went straight to video. It's probably trash, which is Un- very untrue, especially if you watch the type of movies me and you watch. <laughs> yeah, <I know. laughs> but uh, yeah, that's another good one. That's another good documentary to check out for you and as well as others who are a fan of hip hop and basketball and just the '90s, just the '90s era in general. Like that's our era, so we should check it yeah. out. But again, we're here to review the movie "Let the Right One In." And before we get started, I think I'm going to take these shots. Do you have anything to drink? Yeah, yeah oh. I got something. Yeah. Oh, smearing off. You're drinking that right off the bottle, aren't you? Yes, Sad. I am. That's why you're my guy, dude. This is hundred proof. Uh, no, nah, this is flavored. Mine's not a hundred proof. I wish this. I mean, I don't mind it. That shit is good, though. I bet. No, That's it's good. really good. Yeah. Chaser. But uh, cheers, yeah. man. Cheers. <coughs> it tastes like rubbing alcohol. <laughs> yeah, it does. And Especially it's vodka. And it's warm, too? What kind you got? You got the Tito's? Nah, Amsterdam. Amsterdam. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. I never had Amsterdam. Yo, their Is flip this... ones are good. Like, their pineapple one, fucking delicious. Are they smooth? It, it's smooth, but it's just like... You know the cheap vodka. You know what I'm talking about. Like, that gritty... No, 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 it's smooth. It's smooth. Amsterdam's a pretty, it's, it's only like 20, 25 bucks. Well, this bottle is 25 because not these little jars. 100 proof? 25 for 100 proof bottle. Oh, shit. You got that on Broadway? Yep. The, you know, the one, the discount. discount. Yep, yep, yep. I, I think that's what my wife grabbed. I'm not 100% sure, but I know okay. that this bottle up there. Nice, nice. I usually, we usually go with the 100 proof Southern Comfort because that's my shit. I fucking love it, but you know, you got to switch it up sometimes. Mm-hmm. But yeah, because you because you have the hundred proof, you can have two shots there. I did uh, yeah. like a lot of gulps, so I probably got like five or six shots. <laughs> See, this this right here though, the um hundred proof vodka doesn't hit me like the hundred proof um Southern Comfort. Now if I did like three or four shots of Southern Comfort versus this, you'll see a difference. <laughs> <laughs> you'll see a no, difference. hundred proof is no joke. That's all I used to buy. I did not ever walk out of store, and I used to get mad because you can't really get flavored hundred proof. You have to get the original because the flavors is what drops the percentage down. That's true. So I'm like, uh, but I want something like flavorful to put in a drink, you know. But yeah. it's it is what it is. I might get a hundred proof something next time. Sure? Maybe like Southern Co, <laughs> Southern Comfort or something. It's like what we've been doing. Well, since we got this bottle, which is gone now, is doing um shots with a chaser. So instead of making like a big ass drink, just do you know one or two shots. Like I just yeah, just get the buzz going. And then get just to chase, just to chase it, just to get that taste out. But it's 
All it's right. one of those things because like we had the bottle. See, I should have left. The, I should have left the bottle in the freezer. Now that I think about it, yeah. and I'll get into this really quick. What we want to do is we're going to get like we have about seven of these little jars, these little mason okay. jars, which you can get from that broad. You know, the liquor store in Broadway. Yeah, and it comes with a uh, moonshine. Like this is watermelon moonshine. If oh yeah, you, I had that. It's delicious. I have apple pie too. Yeah, this. I think this is the best one though. Like I like the apple pie one, but if you're a fan of watermelon, this tastes just like watermelon. <laughs> Hear me out, people. This is for all races, not just my black brothers <laughs> and sisters. Sure. But, uh, no, I was about to make a comment on that too. I was about to tell people it's not because he's black. <laughs> no, it's not. I mean, part of it is, but no. What I'm getting at though is like you've had artificial watermelon flavored beverages or candies or drinks. Yeah, that's the best one. I don't like regular watermelon. I like the flavored I mean, candies and shit. I'm the opposite. Some of the candies, yes, I had the gum and I had the cupcakes. Hated it. Some of the juices are okay, but this tastes just like watermelon, and it's just like, interesting. It's perfect, and it's one of those things where, like, I'm just thinking to myself, I'm like, I want to get like a vodka, like a plain vodka, and just soak it in watermelon, just or soak oh. it in vodka, pour it in like a bowl. You never, you never had a uh, spiked watermelon? No, believe it or not, I haven't. Really? Listen, hmm. us African American folk, as soon as we slice that watermelon open. We, that, uh, that that's you, your problem. You don't slice it open. You put a hole, and you gut it out, and you pour. You like you put the hole in, and you swish it around so it breaks it up. Mm -hmm. You pour whatever remainder juice out. Then you just take a bottle of vodka. You put it upside down. Let the shit drain in there. Then you let it sit. See you that? put the the part you cut out. You put back in. You like you cork it. Mm -hmm. You let it sit. Then, then when you're ready, you pop it out, and you can fucking uh, think. Did this, my one friend have a tap? I think I've seen the taps with some of those yeah. online, like videos and stuff. You can do a tap, but there's another way to get it, get it out too. And I forgot what they. Damn, I forgot what they did because watermelons are usually too heavy. Unless you get a smaller one, yeah, you can pick it up and pour it. But yo, that that'll light you up. <laughs> I know. I know. I, see, I was thinking of more of the fact of just like slicing it open or buying something that's already sliced and seedless and just because the watermelon is so easy to like absorb something just yeah in like a bowl and pouring some vodka in that bowl and then just go let it sit yeah why not by the way we should do this for like every video we what? should do like a beginning of the episode cheers and take a few shots i'm down i'm definitely <laughs> down with that <laughs> Matter of fact, we're not only are we going to do that, but when we say cheers for this, this is for here on out. Hopefully, possibly as long as we have as long as we have drinks, it'll be from here on out. Yeah, it doesn't even always have to be liquor. It could be we could have a beer or whatever, but it'll be cheers to everybody watching this episode. There you go. Make it fair for people who don't drink because they are underage, which you shouldn't be drinking, or they just don't drink because they don't drink. Whatever you want to drink, if you want a soda, a water, Kool Aid. Any type of beverage that you drink, that you're drink, it's cheers to everybody out there. Take a drink with us. Take a shot with us. And I'll even make it more fun to just take, like, maybe I'll have, like, two or three shots for max, depending on the day we're recording, and depending on how strong the alcohol is, and just kind of take a random shot throughout the video. Like, we'll take exactly. one to start it, and then see what happens after that. Hey, I, I might do one at the end. You never know. Yeah. I would, but I, I'm all out right now. Like I said. Oh, like, yeah. That's right. You did both. Oh, man. Yeah. And the bottle's gone. <laughs> all right but it's all good so anyway back to back to the movie to the movie which hang on really quick people i have to duck down and show you just look at this <laughs> yeah that's that's pretty cool that's a good background i like how that our faces we seem like we're part of the uh the movie posters starring me yeah and, <laughs> and, and it makes it funny because we both look like like look i look like a, a creepy but you don't want to let that motherfucker in your house i I should do some wild some wild ass cheesy smile or something you should you have to you you look like a, like like i'm look up in the air <laughs> the, you know what we gotta do we'll discuss i'm gonna say it out here out loud but we should depending on what movie we're gonna do maybe we should try to think of a like look at the the artwork of the movie to figure out how we can fit our faces. Oh, that'd be dope. Because we do, we have enough time. We give each other a heads up, like what we're going to do next. Yeah. Sometimes it's days. We could definitely find it, like look at the poster and try to mm -hmm. picture, do a picture real quick. And you could, what you could even do is like, say you take your, obviously you take the picture, you send it to me. And if there's a certain movie poster 
say there's a certain movie poster for say if we did Halloween, for example, and there's four different Halloween posters you like or that are out there, but do you like a certain one that you want your face to be? I could just do that. So whatever one you want to be in, you don't have to have like, the, I just did this because it just worked. It lined up so well. This one, you look like you're in one of the fucking racist groups. <laughs> uh, yo. Racist prison <laughs> groups. Was that my uh, COVID haircut? Or is that you took off Facebook? That I just grabbed off Facebook. Oh yeah, that's definitely. That's when I used to do my own hair and I used to just put it all the way down to like one. Yeah. And shave my whole head. He's that not- was, yeah, when you're poor, can't afford oh, those haircuts, bro. Broke? Man, I know. <laughs> I know. That was the do. I'm actually thinking about. Um, I'm not gonna do it now, but I think in the winter I'm gonna go back with my high top fade that I had last year. Yep. It's just too hot in the summer to be having long hair. And it is. It's hot, man. But this I, is my I, COVID. I'm still cutting my own hair, man. I'm cutting it down. You haven't been to the barbershop since? Fuck no, bro. I don't go into places. I don't even go to restaurants. I've been. I went one time to the barbershop. Uh, I I understand they're clear. They're safe now and everything, like uh, how they're doing, like the shield and cleaning and everything. But I don't know. I still try. For now, I'm still staying away. And plus, my barber is probably booked. Because, so I don't know. It's, and plus, my hair is not long enough to get my style I used to have. I'll have to grow it out. Yeah, see? I'm I'm like, right, look at this up top. I don't like this. I'm like thinning out. Can I save this? Um, I don't know, man. Rogaine? It's not like horrible, <laughs> horrible, but it's just... You know what I, I mean? Know. Yeah, I don't know. Like it, my hair still grows, but I have spots. I gotta. Yo, I gotta. I'm not. I'm not doing that crazy shit. If my I start balding. I don't know if I will because my family's pretty good with hair until you're really old. But um, if I do, yo, I might just go fucking like Stone Cold style and just shave that fucking down. See, I I would. I honestly would. It's just I have a big ass head, and it's not like the like the round peanut shape, so it's not gonna look right at yeah. first. It's gonna. It's gonna be one thing that's gonna take some time getting used to, I guess. Yeah. And I mean, I I'm sorry to white people, bald white men, but you already know what jokes are gonna be coming. Yeah, no. <laughs> you gonna say, oh, you, you just came back from the clan meeting? Yeah. <laughs> or Nazis, or whatever. But no, I, I'm like, I don't know. I can't do that shit. Like some people will go bald up here and they'll keep the hair on the sides. Oh fuck! The, if, I'm like, if, it looks like a bird's nest. If this goes, all this is going. But That's what I'm saying. If there's, a way, if there's a way I can save this, I might try. Because it's, I mean, it's not horrible, horrible, but it's still like, I don't know. It's it's one of those things where it's like, at the same time, if it's something, say if you have to fucking pop a pill every day for the rest of your life. Oh, yeah. It's I'm not, sure something will come soon. But they got some kind of treatments so that it worked well, a little. But have, by the time you go, like, in the future, I'm sure they're going to have some shit. We'll see. Yeah, we'll see. But anyway, I don't. I don't get a lot of facial hair. Like I grow. I can like this can grow out longer. I had it to about here, but I cut it and went for it to grow back. This can grow kind of, but I don't like it. It won't. It's starting to slowly connect. Look like right here. Like if this connected all the way around, I'd keep this more the goatee, and have this go down. I don't. Yeah. But I don't get like all of this. I get like little fraggly hairs. Whatever. Yeah, I get. I get patchy. It's getting better, but forever, and, man. Matter of fact, really quick before we review this movie, I promise this is the last shit. <laughs> Anybody who watches this who can give me some pointers on not only getting this to get back to where it should be, but getting I just want this to go T and then this to come down. That's it. A Sharpie. Sort of, no, not a Sharpie. <laughs> <laughs> if there's some sort of like treatment, shampoo, oils, like you know, natural oils that I can use, I'll do it. I'm cool with that. I'm sure there's something out there. But uh let's get into this movie. All yeah, right. Um I will start off by saying I did like this movie. I did like it. I like the Let Me In version, the, the English version. Oh, yeah. I like them both. So I like them, yeah. It, it's more of a... It is kind of romancy. Mm-hmm. It's like two... Like, I think they're like 13. By the way, by the way, yeah, Sweden has some balls. I, they show some 13-year-old I, pussy. I, I, I was like, um... That was uncomfortable. It was. It, it was only one second because I understand he's thirteen. He did a peak. Uh, what I, what I'm thinking, what I'm hoping is when he did the peak, I'm sure the little girl wasn't the young woman wasn't in there naked. What I'm thinking is maybe they use somebody older. Maybe. Um, I hope so. I don't know the rules over there at the same time, but I'm, in my mind, they used like a nineteen, say twenty, twenty one year old. It could be because she's a vampire. She said multiple times that the boy asked her how old you are. She's like twelve. And something, but she'd been twelve a long time. Yeah, so she could be like a hundred years old. In the movie, in the movie, 
But I'm saying, as far as the actress, yeah, I hope that, so. That did because that, that was awkward. That, but I feel I do feel like it was somebody that was of age. But it was still uncomfortable. I was, like I was not expecting that. No, me either. I, I was like, oh, he's peeking. I thought they were just gonna show him peek and go. It was like eyes ah, bugged up, like oh, you know. Yeah, but, but they man. actually showed. I was like, and it wasn't like boobs. It went oh. right to the little patch of hair. Yes. I was like, what the? <laughs> I was like, yeah, okay, that that's, cool that's that's a little weird. That wasn't cool at all. But other than that, the movie was very enjoyable. Yes. It was good. And like. You know what was crazy? You know what was funny is I was watching it with my wife. She was kind of watching it. She was on her phone and stuff. And she was saying that the boy looked more like a vampire than the girl did. He did. He was like pale was and so weird. Pale. He was so pale. But I feel Boy. his look worked for the movie, for the role he played, which I do feel like another thing I want to say is I may look these actors and actresses up, at least him and the girl, just to see them in other roles. Hopefully they're in more horror roles. Oh, I I did a peek. I went to uh, IMB and they showed more modern pictures. But mm -hmm. one that girl, well, how old she is now? She's good looking. Um, the boy, he still looks dorky, but shorter hair. He still looks like I don't know. But I don't know if he's anything else though. I didn't click that far in. See yeah. What else they played in? Gotta check it out. I gotta check it out because it's like I like seeing horror. I love horror movies and I love seeing like. People grow in horror and keep sticking with. It. I wish that back. The black doesn't bother me too much, but it's just, nah, it's not bad. I'll fix it next time. People, don't worry. But what I'm saying is, like, as far as like when children in horror movies, I want to see how they grow. Like, I'm just thinking about this now. I want to see how they grow. Like, I want to see how these two grow in, into. If they stick with horror, I'll say. Like, I want to see. Yeah, what see what, yeah, see when they're older in another horror movie, see how they go. Yes. Yeah. Exact. Exactly. Exactly, man. And another thing, like. Like with this movie, it is very similar. To Let me like even with the snow and being the outside, snow, yep, the winter outside. It was in the winter outside. They met up and like I don't remember in Let Me In. Now you remember when he said like, "What happens if you just come in?" And she pretty much just comes in. She starts like bleeding. Yeah, I don't think that happened in Let Me In. I was gonna ask you if that happened, and I, I don't. I don't recall that part, but I thought that was pretty cool. I thought it was awesome because I was wondering the same thing. Like what happens? Cause he's, I, and what I liked about it, uh, that scene was like how he was like knock, knock and like, kind of like, cause that's what a kid would do. Yeah. It would be like, look, there's no fucking, there's no, is there an invisible force field here? Like what's going on? Shit. That's what yeah. I would do. I'm a grown man. Like, yeah. What's going on? You come and in she liked, and she likes him so much. She did it. Yes. Just to prove. And she was just sitting there shaking. I'm like, what the hell is she doing? And, and I know I see. I watch a lot of vampire moves movies, so I know the rules, and I know they have to be invited in, and all that. So this was a good thing to show that part because I don't think I don't recall a lot of movies where the vampire walks in because they can't. They have to be invited, so they're sitting there at the window, like even like the old school Lost Boys. He's at the window; he can't come in unless they invite him in. And they never showed like I'm breaking the rule. I'm just going to go in and see what happens. Yeah. This actually was cool. She started bleeding from out of every hole. Her so, head, or eyes, or ears. That does make me want... I have to go back and watch Let Me In just to see if that does... Because... I don't recall it. I don't recall it, but I haven't seen that movie in a long time. Also, the part where she bit the one girl, the lady, and she turned yeah. into a vampire. That was dope scene, though. She killed herself, but the, she said, open the windows. Yes. And she just and, burst into fire. And the fire... See, now here's my thing. I'm very, very, like... As far as like cheesy movies, whatever the case may be, this wasn't a cheesy movie, but hear me out, people. Fire is something I feel like has to be right and has to look right, no matter what type of horror, no matter what type of movie it is. Fire cannot look like it's CGI fire because it looks like. I hear you. You want to know what's good too? That that scene recalled the the bed scene in Friday the Thirteenth, how the fire went up into the ceiling, like she burst and a big flame went up, like the uh, blood from the bed. Nightmare on Elm Street, you mean? Yeah, Nightmare on Elm Street. My bad. And you yeah. Wear a t shirt. Matter of fact, why don't you yeah. show the? Why don't you show the, the yeah. your shirt? Because that's a dope ass shirt. And <sighs> you have to send me the link. Matter of fact, not only send me the link, can you post the link in the horror in the horror Star thirty group? Because I think people would like that a lot. That's a dope yeah. I, yeah, I'll have to find it. Um, but I can definitely do that. I found it on Facebook actually because uh, one day I was um. I was searching just, I was on like Amazon and shit and I was just searching like uh horror shirts and everything. And I went on Etsy and all that. 
Mm-hmm. But then this side, I was on Facebook scrolling. You know how your phone listens to you. Yep. And all of a sudden, I seen this. I was like, whoa, what the hell is this? I clicked on it. They have, uh, I won't say a lot. They do have a decent amount of shirts like this. They do it like cartoon style. So they'll take like Jason, like cartoon with a bigger head, smaller body, mm-hmm. shit like that. It's it's pretty cool. It's cool. And it's one of those things where like you don't really see it too much right now. Yeah, exactly. Like, I had to get them though. I bought three of them. So I got Freddie. I got Jason. And I want to say Mike Myers. Okay. Nice. So, matter if you, I don't know how often you and your wife go to go to Walmart. I know you just said you don't really go to stores. Yeah, we do. We do a pickup. We order. We go at like seven o'clock in the morning. Pick shit up. When one of these days you need to walk your ass into Walmart or give me the money, let me know what size shirt you wear. They have because now, like around now, they have some awesome fucking like horror related shirts. Like I have, my wife got me, which I'm gonna get another one. She got me a um. Halloween shirt. She got me a 3X, which I wore it already, which is fine. I like it. But it's a ho- it's a movie poster from the original Halloween. Oh, yeah. I've seen those. Eight, yeah. eight bucks. If you, yep. if you buy it from the store, it's like eight bucks. But if you buy it from online, they charge you like 20 something between 25 and $30 for the same same exact shirt. At least they did like a year or two ago. I don't know if they still do that now, but if you buy it in the store, it's like eight bucks. And it's worth it because it's a fucking awesome shirt. But my next thing is, I still want to get one of those shirt press things I was telling you about and get the correct printer for it. Oh, yeah. I want to do... Because something like like this right here, yo, I would put this on the shirt. <laughs> These shirts back here, I would put that on the yo, shirt. Like every I, movie, like be. if you had like the cheaper shirts, like you just bought like the cheap t-shirts in both. And yeah. like every every podcast, you're like, oh, I'm reviewing this movie. You go make the shirt really quick and you wear it. <laughs> As a matter of fact, here's what I would do. If, if slash when I do this, I would set it up so like say if it's for you i'll be like, yo i got a shirt i'll charge like five ten bucks if you're gonna be on the show with me ten bucks i'll do the shirt for you you wear it on the show i wear it on the show just something like that and do, but do something funny like this though i hear you I would, oh i see what you're saying yeah like i would rock this out in public oh yeah, yeah. what would make it even funnier is if i sent you the shirt with my face on <laughs> we wear each other's yeah. I'm like, who the fuck is that? A boy. <laughs> that would be funny. That would be funny. Is, is he still with us? Yeah, he's he's at home with his wife or something. I don't know what he's doing right now, but he's yeah, he's still then with us. Then on the back, you put chorus or sturdy across the shoulders. Yes. Yes. Hell yeah. That would be, that would be awesome and funny. <laughs> Actually, I'm going to do, for my brother Henry, which we will get back into the movie. This is horror related, though. I have, it's, it's my profile picture right now, I believe, which is me cheesing. With that balloon picture, it's a picture like looking this way and looking this way, and me in the middle smiling like this. Yep, yep, yep. I'll see you in your nightmares. I'm putting that on a shirt for my brother. Nice. Okay. <laughs> I was like, I said to him, like, hell yeah. That's funny. So I, I just had to find like a website that I can do it for. Yep. Make it up, obviously, order it online and just have it shipped to his house. Because <laughs> I think that's fucking hilarious. And he, the funny thing is, he will wear it out in public. I hope he wears it like when he's going out with his wife. <laughs> going out to dinner or something. Like, who is this? Uh, oh, that'll be good. He calls me, besides being, um, besides us calling each other brothers, he refers to me as his heterosexual life partner. <laughs> wow, okay. Yeah, I mean. Hey, I, th- I think that's the closest you're going to get to uh, how us white people. Yeah. Well, you, I'm gonna say white guys, like me and my brother. Yeah, you. I, oh my. I think God. I think that's the closest you're gonna get. Yeah. Which I mean, we have our jokes, of course, guys. You know what it is? Okay, people. I swear, after this, we will get into the movie. But you know what it is with guys of all races? We're very immature to an extent. Ladies, no disrespect. I feel like us guys have a lot more fun than women do, because oh, we yeah. used to heart are too serious. With certain shit, especially once you're close, like good friends or whatever the case may be, once you guys are close and have that close guy relationship, damn near anything goes. I don't mean that in a bad way. I'm just saying, like, as far as the jokes, as far as, like, just <clears throat> anything, embarrassing each other. Like, if we embarrass each other in public, we don't get mad at each other. No. Nope. Like, I'm going to outdo you. Yep. I'll say it like this. We could do that. We can embarrass each other in public. 
not, but you might be a little bit annoyed or embarrassed, of course, but you're not going to be like mad or like, I'm going to fuck him up. Females, I feel you guys will fight over that. We can wrestle and play fight and not be mad at all. We can slap box. Yeah. I don't think females can do that. We can crack jokes on each other. Maybe women can do that. Maybe. I'm not being sexist. To an extent. I, think, I don't think they can go hardcore, like, deep. Oh, like, no. We'll, we'll pick out, like, something you know hurts. Yo, here, here's one thing. <laughs> here's one thing I can almost guarantee. As guys, we can all come in wearing the same exact shirt and give each other the pound to be happy as shit. Like, oh, shit. Oh, yeah. Yep. Been Women, there. Done that. Hell, yeah. Mad times. Yo, there was a time. Listen to this shit. It was me. My wife, my brother, and his wife. We went out to eat <laughs> at, uh, what's that place? Cheesecake Factory. Me and my brother were wearing the same turtle shirts. If they weren't the right. same, they're very, very similar. Didn't call each other, just have it. <laughs> I find it's turtle shirts. <laughs> Great. Right? So here, here's how I make it. Here's what's funny, though. It was me and my brother, Henry, his wife, Serena, and my wife, Francis. So they have me and Henry stand by each other and take a picture together. <laughs> So my, my, my younger brother, Christian, does a ghetto Photoshop to make it look like we're whole day. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, we posted on Facebook. We were dying. I was that's, like, that's great. See that shit. But again, like stuff like that, like, again, that's stuff you could do with your guy. For, I'm, females can hold hands though, without anybody judging. That's one thing they could do. They could hold hands. They could hug and all that stuff. If me and you were holding hands, walking down, walking at work, Somebody might go to HR and like, listen, I'm uncomfortable. Yeah, doing? Yeah. Like, look, I'm just holding, you know, he fell. I was helping him up, but I'm just holding his hand. Simple. They, I, I will admit, um, you see it. I'm sure a lot of people see Vine videos when Vine was out. You see YouTube. Oh, 99% of the time, it's white men, white males, that take the extra step, what you were saying. So you thought the extreme was your one brother took a picture and put on Facebook, you guys Photoshop holding hands. No, that's nothing. No, it's not. That's not even close to the line. You heard what me and my brother joke about. Yes. And that's just you two joking. You, you guys that's don't mean that bad. Like, as far as, like, what I've seen on Vine videos and YouTube videos, I'm just like, the fuck? Where, where we would be like, we go, no, no limits. We got the same mother, but we'll see each other and go, yo, your mom's a whore. And yeah. <laughs> matter of fact, this conversation right here, you two are having <clears throat> when you were, you guys are both talking about like prostitute and workers on loose quarter. It's, I don't know which one of you said. I think your brother was like, yo, I'm going to be working your mom's quarter. You're like, you better not because that bitch owes me bread. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yo, like, see, other people will shut down and they'll go, yo, that's fucked up. That's your mom, too. No, nah, you continue it. You got to see who gets the last. I was, How far you go, man. But with, with you two, I've always seen you two, like, from what I've seen, and this is, like, through text messages or, like, a quiet conversation yep. in, at lunch or something between us three. Yeah, exactly. And you two just go back and forth, back and forth. And it's not always to that extreme. Like, I remember when we were eating those um those pickles, the horse riders pickles. Yeah, it's the hot. Yo, yo, fucking, they're, never, they're fucking killer, by and the way. Mind, mind you, people. Him and his brother look damn near like they look like they're damn near twins. Like one of them was born earlier. He was born late. And I'm just fatter. And like you were you ate the pickle. You look you like your you were eyes on water, you're turning red. It was a horse riders pickle. And he was eating his smile and he was like, Yeah, he was adopted. I'm like, what the fuck? You two look exactly alike. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, that's a common thing. That's uh, that always goes on. It goes back and forth. I said about him. I go, Yeah, you're adopted and all that shit. We do that all the time. I mean that 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 next that's like inty winty compared to what they say, and I, I love it. Like I, that's oh. one. I'll admit that's one thing I do miss about going to work is like the jokes we had at lunch. Yeah, time. yeah. And but the people. That's what I'm saying. Like the lunchtime, definitely, because that was our. We called it the Breakfast Club. Yes, and it was like when, 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 when it was lunchtime too. That's a funny. Thing. It was lunch. Yeah, that was what made it funnier. But like, I just miss like the back and forth with certain things. Like, for example, Kalen and Brain was hilarious. Oh, yes. Fucking um, you and your brother, of course, and then like me and you would always twist it, all the fucking. Uh oh no, because our minds are guttered. So I want to have like a common conversation. They will say like, I'll say a hundred words. We pull out key words. We hear like someone would be talking about a farmer, and we hear cock, wet, moist. We're like, whoa, what's going? 
<laughs> it, the thing is, if we don't say anything, we just start laughing. We just look, we just look at each other and start dying because we're thinking the same thing. It, you know, you know, that, that, you know, it's another thing I miss is grandma. Like, yeah, you know, her name is Ro, but I always call her grandma. And like, at, you know, what was funny was like every time I called her, she didn't get offended by it, and I didn't mean oh. it. I was just being funny with it, like. She would, you know, cuss us out for it, but then after a while, it was funny because everybody referred to her as grandma, and she just accepted it. Like she accepted it, it. That's one thing I like about which we we really need to talk about this movie. Yeah, but we do. I want to yeah. tell you guys about myself. Like that's one thing I do like about myself, which I'm not trying to sound like a fucking arrogant asshole. Is like I have like this thing about me to where like, if I'm cool with people, like I can joke around with people and say certain things. And not just dis- disrespectful, like calling somebody grandma. I would call Hamadi the grandpa or Uncle H, for example, or nine eleven or whatever, but yeah. not in like a disrespectful way. And not to disrespect nine eleven, but what I'm getting at is like people just accept like that nickname or just like laugh about it and make a joke because I wouldn't come at it like aggressively, like yeah, it's not negative know. at all. And me and you with uh, the race jokes and the fat jokes with you, you yo, know, we oh we go God. back and forth, you know, all you, the time. <laughs> You would have me in tears almost. Listen to these people. His brother, like, like we worked on the fifth floor. His brother worked on the opposite end. He came all the way over to tell James that he bought out his scratch off. James was like, I should fucking punch you in the face right now. <laughs> I was like, wait a minute. You're not going to take congratulations? He's like, hell no. No, no fuck that. Because you're like, fuck it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna br- <laughs> yeah, I'm going to break it down. Because he could have easily sent an IM on Skype and said, yo, I just want $50. He took his time to walk across the floor to tell me. So in my head, he did that just to rub it into my face. He probably did. So I said, I, I should punch you in your fucking face right now. And I was like, you're a piece of shit. You know, fuck you. Get out of here. It, it, it was funny, though, because me, <sighs> I, I, there's no way in hell I'm going to walk all because, like, it wasn't like they were in the same area. Like, he had to walk from, I don't even know how to explain the distance. No, it's like a, it's like, it's yeah, decent. just say, say it's like a 2,000 or 3,000 square foot floor. He's completely on the other side. Yeah, he came all the way. He walked way. all the way over here to my desk in my face in a, where you're, I was talking to you. And he just comes up and goes, yo, I just won $50 on a scratch off. What makes it funnier though is like he, he had nothing else to tell you. He just, he said that. Yeah. He punched him in the face and he, la- he smiled he left. and left. He left. That's it. That's all he came for. Rubbed in my face. That's all it was. Oh, Fuck him. I'm still. What? I'm. I, like I told James this. I told you this plenty of times. I was like, I'm just waiting for the day where you two to start scrapping the Peter and the chicken and the hall. I would lose. Yo, if that yo. happened, I would lose my damn. Minus the whole consequence. Like if there's no consequences, I would lose my mind. Bro, if my knees weren't bad, we would definitely do that. <laughs> we will like fake fight, roll on the ground and everything. I throw him through the fucking break room door. <laughs> Throw them on the table. It would. It'd be like Peter Pan. Go all the way to the elevators. Go down. <laughs> hit the button to wait for it. <laughs> we'll make the fire if you got two separate elevators. Yeah, you get in. Just meet out the bottom downstairs and just start going again. Oh no, we we're that tight. We would do that. We we joke around all the time like that shit. I tell you, me and Nicholas Cage would do that, but it'd be a real fight. No, that would be a real fight. Yeah, or my brother and Corey Feldman. Yeah, <clears> they don't but want. anyway. I guess we should get back in the movie, right? No. <laughs> we will. Okay, so we left off about the scene of the fire. Okay, so... Which was uh, I, yeah, I, I, uh, yeah, getting back to it, because she, like, at first, the when she first... Because the girl bit her in the neck, and the girl, the woman's boyfriend or husband or whatever, or fuck buddy, whatever he was, came and kicked the girl off, and she just, like, yeah. looked, she looked back. And for a split second, I was like, she's going to kill that guy until she, she heard... Was to. Yep the people in the background so she took off and he you know he helped the girl he helped the woman up or whatever and you know i forgot what happens like right after that but later on in the movie you find like she's laying in bed and the sunlight comes in her room and it's hitting her finger and her finger starts like burning so she pulls her hand in and she kind of seems confused she goes into, she eventually goes into the bathroom i remember if it was that same night or the next day and she takes the bandage off her no, it was the same day she was starting to feel the hunger because she's seen the holes in her neck, and then she she looked at the 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 bandage with the blood on it. And she like smelled it. Yep. And then there was that scene, and then when um, what's up with the cat? The cats and the vampires. Oh, that see, that's another that that's, I, that's not in every movie. 
But there is uh, a few movies with uh, vampires where cats sense them, and they are basically the cat is like a vampire's enemy. Okay. So they will attack and chase them and jump on them and bite them and everything. Go, get away, like danger. Get out of here. I think that's one part I did not like about the movie. Like I didn't mind them hissing, but when they attacked the vampire woman, it yeah. seemed kind of cheesy. I mean, I get it now because you're explaining because I didn't know that. But it seemed kind of cheesy. It was funny. Like, oh, I, it was I, funny, especially I, how the cats I, were looking. That's off. Yeah, the way the cats were looking. Yeah. And then when she fell down the stairs and all this stuff. And then, like, what was weird, though, was they put her in, like, an insane asylum after she had attacked by a bunch of fucking cats. Yeah, I know. That was weird. That threw me off. They like, had her, like, locked up, like, her, like. Yeah. I get, yeah. Going to a, I get going to a hospital for injuries or injuries because you don't know what's going on. But it wasn't like a normal hot. Like they had her shut down. They just put her in a room and had her shut down the whole time. And then, um, you know, you know, it goes to the scene that we were discussing where pretty much her and her husband are talking, and she, he goes in the hallway for whatever reason. The doctor comes in and he's just talking to her about the blinds. She, she's like, "Can you open the blinds for me?" Opens the blinds, and she's engulfed in flames, and it goes up to the ceiling and everything. Which, yes, like you said, kind of reminds you of the blood from Freddy from Freddy from. Nightmare on Elm Street, the original Nightmare on Elm Street, where yeah, part one, yep. Johnny Depp actually. Johnny Depp, yep. The bed scene, the famous yeah. bed scene. Yes, which was an awesome scene. Yeah. And then you know, like the guy's yelling, he opens the door, the husband sees it on fire, and then that's pretty much all you see of that. And then he goes after the little girl. What What had me confused was like, how did he know where the girl lived? She told him. She pointed. She so they, just moved in. She, she. He was like, "You live there." And she, and he was, she was like, he was like, where you live? And she pointed up to the window. It was like right next door of his. Not the little boy, the guy. Oh, the guy? Oh, yeah. no, because they know that a new guy moved in with a daughter. Okay. So okay. he walked and he looked up in the window. He, he was just walking, like strolling, like crying. But he looked up and seen the window. He goes, that motherfucker. Because he got, remember, he poured acid on his face. Yes. Because he got caught. He wanted out. He didn't want no more. He didn't want to kill no more no more people. That's why the boy, he was just sitting there looking no, no. at him. I think it was a part of that. No, but remember in that scene, though, his friends were calling, like, hey, Maddie, 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 or whatever. And the one friend was knocking on the window, and the guy kind of looked at the window. Yeah, but he it looked like he was sitting there for a while, like, thinking. Like, the dude, like, the kid was, and you think he would have taped his mouth? It's like, I think he just had enough of it. He got sick and tired of it. Possibly. That, that's why he poured the ass out of his face. Yo, by the way, that was badass looking. Yeah. When they showed his face. It looked like Two-Face from Batman, kind of. <laughs> I think it was Two-Face from Batman. Yo, for one, that would be banned up. They ain't want to let that shit be like oh, that. It will be pussing and everything. Yeah. But what I, excuse me. What I liked about the hospital scene, the girl goes in. She asks, you know, my father was in here. The police brought him in, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, he's on the seventh floor. And then she leaves and she's barefoot. Yep. And then, then the nurse comes out, or the receptionist, excuse me. Yeah, she felt sorry like, for her. Felt yeah. sorry, comes out and she doesn't see her. In the background, you see her climbing up the building. Yep. To the window, yep. To the window. The which she knocks on the window, of course, asks to be let in. He lets her. No, she doesn't let her in, actually, because he couldn't talk. No, he came to the window <laughs> opened it. He opens the window. He takes the, the uh, oxygen thing out of his neck. Sticks his head out the window, and she bites his... Like, he sacrifices himself for her. Yeah, because she was starving. Because he wasn't and, there to get her food. At the, But at the same time, I feel like he wanted out of life because... Yes. Of, after this, if, if and when I do heal up, I'm going to prison for life, for murder, yep. and attempted murder. Yep. And, like, I like how he, she bit his neck, sucked his blood, and I like how he just, like, fell out the window. Yeah, yo, and he hit that thing mad hard, too. <laughs> Like, wink. Oh, he hit that. I think it was a dumb one. I think you're right. I think, and it also seemed like, in the because you know how she said she's been 12 for a long time. Yeah. So she probably found others to do this for her. Mm -hmm. And and she probably knew, and she probably told him ahead of time, like, hey, if you want out. So he's like, they didn't even talk. He just went there, and she knew exactly what he wanted and what to do. Yeah, that's true. Like, that's if you true. get caught killing for me and you don't want to go to prison, I will end you for you. Yeah, take you out. I That's where I got off that. But now, see, here, really quick, jump into the end of the movie, which I, again. By the way, that scene was crazy. You're talking about the end of pool. 
or the, at the end end? The train. The, okay, you're talking about the we, end end. Okay, the train. Before or after. But with the train, because the boy and the girl, they leave together on the train. I'm wondering, and I know this is like way further ahead because the movie's over, but I'm wondering if, do you think she bites him to turn him into a vampire later on? No, I think this is what, this is how she finds a new host. I think she yeah. finds a boy in how many years? That dude that she killed, who was yeah. killing for her, probably started off as a boy. Mm. And grew up, and he was taking care of her, finding her food, feeding her killing for her to get blood but this but the, the the thing is the dynamic between those two seem different than with the other guy because with the other guy remember when he um he said like you know i don't want you seeing that little that boy tonight like a father figure yeah and she kind of just like brushes him off like i'll do what i she does she just says something or like rubs his cheek and don't then, tell me like what to do type thing yeah, and then remember, the, was it Morris Code they were doing with the knock, knock, and the rub? It was. He did it in a library. He created it. He was like looking at history books, and he was like, "Okay, for J, it's this, this, this." Okay, yeah. So it was like tap, tap, slide, slide. Yeah, yeah. it was like yeah, it was kind of like a Morse code, but with dragon and shit. It's not just the dots. With that though, I'm get, what I'm saying with that is like they're having the conversation, and like she tells the guy to leave. Yep, so then, she like, can do it. Oh, so, and then brushes them off and closes the door. And I'm just like, see, I feel like those two, the vampire chick, Ellie and uh, Oscar, were in love, in a sense. Oh, yeah, definitely. He was definitely in love with her. I think she was, too. That's why she didn't kill him. And she was, like, she protecting him. She protect, and she saved him at the pool scene you were talking about, which we'll get yeah. in a minute. Yeah, we'll get to that. What, what I'm saying, though, is, like, not only that, she came to his room. She slept with him. Like, literally sleeping with him, not. And yeah, no, not that. She was naked, though, because he even said that. He's like, you don't have nothing on. And she was and like, is cold. that weird? Yeah, you're cold. And you're cold. She was like, is that gross? He said no. Yeah. And he asked if... Yo, I'm Can talking you... right now. <laughs> no, 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 no. Bye, bye. <laughs> okay, I'm not go. anything crazy. The part where he asked her to go steady. Yep. Can you imagine, like, that makes me think of, like, how tough it is to be a man and let me just hear me out women as far as when it comes to proposals i'm not you know what, let me rephrase that i'm gonna say i'm not gonna say just men i'm gonna say proposing when it comes to proposing hang on one second real quick let me just state this i'll say for anybody that proposes that can be man or a woman Depending, you know, whatever the case may be, man or woman. I won't just say men. I only said men because I'm a man. I proposed, you proposed. But he's asking the girl to go steady. Like when you're asking a girl, when you're asking your future fiance slash future wife, if she says yes to propose, to marry you, that is some nerve wrecking shit. In the back of your head, you know she's going to say yes. And that's not like on some cocky, like, oh, yeah, she's going to say yeah. Because it's, it's like, no, you know she's going to say yes. You know how you guys feel about each other. But that is some nerve-wrecking shit. Let me tell you guys how I propose, all right? <laughs> Nothing romantic about it. Well, the first day, right? So the, I tried it twice. The first time I tried it, we were laying in bed. And I had the ring in the box, like, under the bed. I think, or I had it like set next to, I forgot how I had it. Maybe I had it in a drawer or something. But anyways, I, I got off the bed and I was like, I think like the, at the time the dog used to sleep in our room and he had like his dog bed, which was on my side. And I was like, I was trying to tell my wife that I was, I was down on one knee, mind you. And I had the ring like in my hand, like, you know, the box open in my hand under the bed though. I was like, come over here, blah, blah, blah. She was having a little, you know, how women have their attitudes at times and she would come over, no, blah, blah, blah. All this other shit. I forgot what she said exactly. And so I was like, in the back of my mind, I'm just like, fuck. So I close the ring box, I put it away, and, you know, I get back in the bed and lay down and watch TV. We're watching, so I think it was that same week, because my brother, my brother Henry wanted me to pick out the ring. Funny thing, real quick with this, so we're looking at rings or all this, which, and I'm just like, I got, I narrowed down to like two or three rings. I'm like, yo, I like, I think it was like two or three. I like both of these. I need like a tiebreaker. And this motherfucker picks the ring up. He's like, well, I'd wear this one if I was a girl. <laughs> so that's the one I chose, right? And, like, they're both really nice rings. So then 
I um, what did I do? Anyway, that's just that part. So proposing, right? So at the time, I was working at a warehouse, and what I did was, I was I was a packer, so I packed the boxes. I brought the ring to work in the ring box. I got a box, you know, like a box about this big, this deep. Had the bubbles and all that wrapped it in bubbles. I think I put. As a matter of fact, I think I put. Did I put it in the envelope? I don't remember if I put it in an envelope or not, but I know I put it in the bubbles and all that shit and taped the shit out of the box and then wrapped the box with either birthday or Christmas wrapping paper so it looked like I wrapped <laughs> it for a child. My wrapping skills are fucking immaculate, in my opinion. And I just had it, like, sitting, I think on, like, an ottoman in our bedroom or whatever at the time. And then we, we at the time, we had a back room, which was, like, our game room slash we would watch the movies back there too as well but we had like all like you know super regular 64 and i think a ps3 hooked up back there and me and her were watching halloween one and i went and got the box yo i handed her the box like i wish i could see my face i looked so she was like you look like what's wrong like i looked sick i looked nervous and she opens the box it's february 13th 2016 because we got married july july 1st 2016 and when she opens up the box, you know, opens it all up and opens it. And as she's opening the ring box, I asked her to marry me. And she said, yes, of course. But, yo, that is some nerve-wrecking shit. Yep, and is. I know, like, why I'm saying this is because the kid was like, do you want to go steady? And he looked nervous saying that. Now, before we dive into this movie more, do you want to tell us about your proposal? Okay. My, the part how it happened, like the start of me knowing – to propose was more romantic than what I did. So this is how I did. So I was just at work. I was in the withdrawal unit still, and I was just sitting there working. And all of a sudden, I, I don't know why I just started thinking like I should marry her. I should get a ring. So I, out of nowhere, this is during the work day. I Skype my brother. I said, Hey, you want to do me a favor? And he goes, what? I was like, you want to bail at lunchtime? To bring me and go buy a ring. This is out of nowhere. This is just me, like mm -hmm. it's like something hitting the back of your head, like mirror. You know what I'm saying? Same here. So I was like, he was like, seriously, and I was like, yeah. He was like, okay. And so we put a slip in. I drove all the way to Latham to a jewelry store. Um, I sat there, I was looking at the rings, and I remember her tol telling me, she's not into that gaudy shit, she don't like big diamonds, mm -hmm. she don't like yellow gold, so I had to get a uh, 10 karat gold, and I got, um, the hell, it, it, it was like a small, smaller, not big, but smaller diamond, but it also had like purple, um, amps, where the fuck that word is, mm -hmm. the, the gem, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. So, I picked up the ring, then I'm sitting there holding it. I'm like, I don't know what to do it. I, you know how normal people will have a party or dinner with family around? No. I'm like losing my shit in my head, right? I'm like, what day, what day? So I had to plan a day ahead of time, but I was so nervous. Every day I was like shaky, like anxiety. I had to get it over with. So I think it was actually, it was a Sunday. It was a Father's Day. Her birthday is the 18th of June. It was that, that it was after Father's Day. And she always said, don't, she's like, she was telling me, if this is like when we're dating, you know how girls hint, if I get married, I don't want to get married on Valentine's Day, no proposals, no, on my birthday, you know. So it was like the day before her birthday, on Father's Day. Now, the sad thing is her father passed away. So in my head, I was like, this is a perfect time. Because my saying, when I asked her to marry me, I was like, it's, I picked this day because it's like your father bless, giving us his blessing. So I did it. This was like, yo, I couldn't even wait during the day. I woke up. I wake up way before her. It was like five. I have like internal alarm clock, five o'clock all the time. I'm up and it's in my night drawer. I'm holding it, waiting for it, waking up, right? I'm just sitting there staring at it, like, wake the fuck up, wake up, right? <laughs> <laughs> so what? she woke up. The first thing she does, she wakes up. She goes to the bathroom, comes back, then she kisses the dog. I, I So I'm sitting at the end of the bed just staring. And I'm like, I got to do it now. I got to do it now. And so she's playing with the dog and everything. And she says something. I go, hey. And I just, she's like, yeah. And I was like, so, so I said the line. I said it on this Father's Day. I know it's not the perfect day. But mm -hmm. to me, I, it feels right. And I handed her the box. And she looked and she started crying automatically. 
So like you knew she was gonna say yes, you know. It's like you said, it's like you know. It, You're not gonna waste your time. Like I never understood that. Like how many people out there after if anybody if this happened to anybody, did anybody ever propose to their girlfriend and she's like, um, no. <laughs> I'm, I know for a fact it's happened, but it's it's one of those things where like I don't know because I obviously my wife didn't say no, but it, I guess it's one of those things where you just feel like she's gonna say yes and feel like everything's going great. And you know what's crazy if you the Valentine's Day thing you said, my wife I proposed to my wife on thirteenth February thirteenth. I wish it was a Friday. We were watching the wrong fucking movie though. I say that because we were watching Halloween, right? As you know, I'm a fucking diehard Jason fan. That's my favorite. Yep. Hers is Freddy. We should have been watching Freddy vs. Jason. We were watching Halloween, which has... Oh, that, oh, that would have been a perfect... Watch. Like, I say that now. And you know what's cool slash funny, though? And, like, we will be inviting people to this, which I would definitely invite you to this. Is I don't know when we're going to do it, but we're talking about maybe 10-year anniversary, is renewing our vows by oh. having, like, a horror-related theme. Yo, that'd be dope. Yeah, I wanted to wear a Jason mask for original wedding. She said no. <laughs> understandable. Family members and everything there, you know. Yeah, that's, that's, that's not understandable. But next time we're going to do it, like, say, if we have a big backyard or at a park and just be, like, horror-themed and just have a good time and have, like, a... Cause we, Yo, that'd be dope. Like, again, people, we'll get back to our, our wedding, but our, I'm sorry, our movie, but we're talking about something that's very important to us both. We both love our vibes. In case they watch this, which we do love our wives, but in case they do watch this, it's brownie points. <laughs> I said that's so probably gonna fuck up the brownie points. <laughs> yeah, like, brownie points. Like for our wedding, it was a small wedding, and like we, it wasn't like a traditional thing where like you have this huge wedding. We had it. It was a small wedding. It was in a church. My sister was a pastor at the time, and she actually married us, which was cool. You know, you have to do the practice thing the night before the rehearsal. We did the rehearsal thing just to. Just as far as like the vows, not the we didn't write our own vows, but that part, like the whole time I was laughing. I was just having a good time. My sister was laughing. Day of, uh, I was on point. I was just boom. Yeah, and me too. One funny thing though, real quick, was my wife was like, uh, as far as writing our own vows, I think she said it's like after the wedding or whatever, it's like talking to people. She was like, I, because like for me, I'm not like a romantic, like expressive person verbally. I think, yeah, me too. Like, I. But, I Yo, told my wife, I, I said, we, like, I hold my, it's like, I got a wall. It's like inside. Like, I don't let my emotions out. I think with me more, it's just like, I don't really know how to verbalize it. I agree. I to agree. Extent, like, why I care about somebody or why I love somebody. It's just like, I just love you because blah, blah, blah. I'm not good at verbalizing it. But if I, I can write the shit out of it. Like, I can write the shit. Like, anytime I wrote her, like, a card or whatever, I can write the shit out of it. And I feel like with vows, with vows, just like not freestyle with freestyling as far as like feelings and shit, she would destroy me. But if we write some shit, the, you know, the pen to the pad, like she's like Jay-Z with that shit. She don't got to write, but I do. And if we have to write some stuff out, I'm knocking that thing out the park because I'm good at that. I'm good at that. But like as far as like verbalization and all that. Expressing my feelings, expressing myself, I'm not good at that, which is crazy. I'm telling like the whole fucking world this. Yeah, I know, right? It's different, but I'm the same way. I just can't. I don't even. I can't even write it either. I just come. It, like I'll write it, and it looks like a kindergarten wrote it because I'll start saying something. Like then I'll say something afterwards where it should be in the front of it. It's tough. Like it's like pff, I, I brutal. I'm like then I don't like oh god. I'm like just panic and just fucking fumble it. Don't get me wrong. I'm not gonna say all guys are like that because there's a lot of guys that are good verbally and and written. Yeah. Me, I'm good written, not necessarily verb. Like I can write it and then possibly read it off to you, but I can't just say it or I can text it. But like verbally, I was never good at stuff like expressing my emotion. I can say I love yep. anybody that I'm, I love. Like I love my friends, I love my family, cool. But as far as like why and all this, that's another thing though. Why? I'm not gonna get into that. You never. All I'm gonna say is. Real quick, ladies, if you tell us you love us, we don't ask why. We're good with this. I love you. You guys, though, <laughs> which I get it. You're, you're, you're emotional. You're more emotional than we are. You're more, you're stronger emotionally than we are. As far I as also, I also think it is because when women say it, they have all that stuff. Why? 
and w- women has a trust thing where a guy says it. They don't know if we're just saying it to get in their pants. Yeah, I love you. I, you know, I, it could be I, a fake. I love you. I've never, I've never said that. As far as like, no, no, that's Ron. Yo, if you do that just to get laid in my single, I mean, you you I've suck. Never, <laughs> I've never said that just to get laid. Like it was either I actually cared about you or I was just, you know. Oh, be honest, man. Like, don't do that fake shit. If they want to relate. You don't, then move on. You can find another girl. Yeah. Because no. I think, I, I will say this. I am a kid. Like, if, if I'm somebody who, like, which is weird getting into this. I'm just going to let it out real quick. If I, if, if, if I find you, like, a friend, if I look at you as a friend, this isn't just for my wife. This is for, like, or my family. This is, like, if I look at you as a, a good friend or a family member, or whatever the case may be, or my wife, of course, I love you. Like, I really do. I love all my friends. I love all my family. And I have your backs any way that I can, to an extent. Now, if you motherfuckers get yourself into some crazy, crazy, crazy shit, more than likely I'll have your back, but I got to see what's going on first. Like, I'm not going to just go into this blind anymore. I'm 34 years old. I can't just go into shit blind anymore. I'm married. I have stepkids. Like, I have a purpose. You know what I mean? I have nieces and nephews. Like, I have... More than just me. Now so this is the wrong. This, so this is the wrong time to ask you to help me bury a body. Depends on whose body it is. Uh, Nicholas Cage. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is joke. Well, this is how we. Go. This is now, joke. This is a joke. All jokes aside, I don't want any harm to happen to Nicholas Cage. I'm not a fan of Nicholas Cage at all. I wish he would stop acting. And simple as that. Back to this movie. <laughs> no, Damn, sorry, we go off topic a lot. We sorry, did. but again, as I've said in this episode, in these episodes, plenty of times, this this show goes all over the place. We throw some gems in there, which I feel like we threw some gems in there. It's a good time, overall, it, good time. It is, and I'll tell you this, guys. Listen, when you go to propose to your lady, it's gonna be hard. It's gonna be tough. I'll say this. Here's my advice to anybody, men, women, who are going to propose to a significant other, whether it's a man proposing to a man or a woman, or a woman proposing to a man or a woman, whatever the case may be, it's all equal there. Do what, when you do this, <clears throat> do what you, do what is something that you both enjoy, or do what's something that's you. You know what I mean? Like me, getting down on one knee, like I said, and my wife didn't come over, that's not necessarily me, and that's not being disrespectful. Me was more of how I did it, like wrapping the thing up, doing it during a horror movie and giving it to her. That's me. James, your thing was just like, I got to get this fucking over with. Yo, not, I, not I was losing my way. mind. That was just anxiety. Like, I got extreme anxiety. So, not in a bad, again, not in a bad way, not in a disrespectful way, but he's just like, look, I get up early as fuck. I'm going to just propose to her now. Yep. I get this over with, like, I want to get this over with because I want to get this over with. No, it's no. It's like, yeah. look, I'm nervous. I got, I, I, I'm going to be, if you didn't do it at that time, you'd be thinking about that shit all fucking day. All day. I, I had it planned on later that day around, like, freaking, like, four or five. Mm-hmm. But I, I caught him. I had to get it. I had to do it. And I'm glad I did because it was like, it was just me and her. Mm-hmm. So it, it's more intimate when it's that way. Oh, like, yeah. And you, you know, like, with, um, uh, with me too was which was funny was like two things I'll say again to my brother Henry shout out to my big my, he is my older brother because he was born a couple months before me I'm not gonna call him my big brother though he's light skinned <laughs> <laughs> but no like uh, he would ask me like yo did you do it did you do it did you do it what are you gonna do it did you do it did you do it did you do it that's the worst too and yeah. like. I was just like, yo, I'm gonna try. To do- I was telling the like, yo, I'm gonna try to do it this week. I'm gonna do it this week. It took me like two. Cause it took me a good two weeks, I think. Yo, it, I was just it, it's rough, man. It beat you down. But the funny thing was, was right. Like his wife knew that he was going with me to look at. Like what we did was, we, me and him went out. We grabbed lunch, and then we went to look at rings. That's another thing, guys. Don't be ashamed to call your best friend or your closest brother, your closest relative, somebody you're real tight with. Male, I agree. You know, not, not as a matter of fact. Proposers, male or female, don't be afraid to call your closest assault, your closest friend or whoever it is, your sibling, whoever it is that you're really close with, to go ring shopping with. I'm just saying, just because it just makes it easier. 
like I said, I was like full of nerves and anxiety. My brother was there, and he would have put me in the like if I picked something stupid out, he would have like, what the fuck are you doing? Yeah, you got to have you have to have so if you're not in the right state of mind, you you, you have, gotta have you yeah. have to have someone there. You have to have somebody that knows how you think, that knows your mind, yes. and also knows yeah. your 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 future spouse or yes. hope to, hopeful spouse at the very least. And like the funny thing was, like I told you how my brother said two things he said that was fucking hilarious. One. I would wear this if I was a girl. Two. This is what he told his wife. <laughs> don't, don't tell Francis. You know, don't ruin this, or I'll kill you. <laughs> <laughs> that means his wife has a big mouth, and he knows she knows it too. He's well, like, listen, like his wife and my wife are obviously friends. Like we're we're all fr- like we're family, pretty much. That's she calls him. That she refers to my brother uh, to Henry as her brother-in-law, and that's her sister. You know, advice about all that stuff. But like, we have the type of relationship to where like, here's an example. I do like I do enjoy reading, but my brother and my wife enjoy reading a lot more. So they'll talk about like the, the Vampire Diaries and fuck not Vampire Chronicles. Or, like, Whoa, I was about to say Jesus. Or um, Twilight. Like my brother read all the Twilight books, and my wife read all the Twilight. So they'll talk about that. And then my brother's not really into like he like he is he like he loves fishing, but he's not into like um football to an extent. He'll call me to talk shit about the Niners, and he's not into like a really MMA. Really, he'll watch it here and there, like if we're watching it together. But his wife is into like she's a Broncos fan, and then she was an Anderson Silva fan. So me and her could be watching the fights, or to be talking about the fights or football, and those will be talking about books, or me and him could be talking about whatever wild shit we're talking about. They can and those two can go out to you know what I mean? like it's one of those type of things where no matter what two are together or for all four together, it's just like always it's nice. good, which is very, that's another thing. People going out to get married and stuff. Try your best to get along with your spouse's best friend or that closest person they have. Cause that can make or break some things. I promise you no more advice for now. <laughs> the movie. Um, okay, let's get back to it. So yeah, you got your take from that part. So here's my take. From which okay, part? Okay, the part where he asked her to go steady. Yes, yes. Okay, so here's mine. I heard that term many times. I know what it means. It means, hey, you want to be my girlfriend. Okay? So, but I put my head in. This is me. I'm, I don't know because we're immature. If that was me, and that's it, it, just, I'm not saying because she's young, I'm nothing pedophile. If I was 13 and a 13 year old girl or 12 got into bed with me naked, I wouldn't be able to say shit. My shit would be like, bang, wait till she falls asleep and something's getting rubbed. (laughs) (laughs) With consent. That doesn't even have to be like, that could be just you and your wife laying in bed together for the first time. No, that is true. That is true. But I'm just saying, like, I would be like, I wouldn't be able to control that age, man. As soon as I knew, as soon as I felt her, I'm like, yeah. this bitch is not wearing clothes. <laughs> Again, that could be your wife. Like, say the, I'm not trying to get into too much detail or get into your personal business, but say like the very first time you slept with your wife because you were just trying to get her in bed. You know what I mean? Like, you were cool. Whatever the case may be, but I'm just saying your wife because you're married now. Same with me. And it's like, when you finally seal the deal, you're just like, Dick. Sometimes in your head, as a man, you're like, yo, I killed that. But if you go back, <laughs> and, about it, you go back and think about it, you're like, yo, I hope she still talks to me. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. You're like, yo, you talk to your boys and shit. They're like, yo, you're like, yo, killed it, yo. They're like, yo, yo how long, man? You're like, and you start thinking, you're like, long shit. enough. Yeah, long enough. That's it. You just end it. <laughs> long enough. That's it. But, uh, what Got it, it done. You know, you know what it is with that, though? With this, I'm not talking about them. I'm just putting myself in that situation or putting you in that situation in the movie as the ages we are now or the ages that you met your significant other. Yeah. And it, when you finally slept together for the first time. And it's just like, there's so much tension. There's so much sexual tension and buildup. And this is before you guys are even to, I mean, I don't know your situation, but our, our situation, we'd start out as friends, but still there's so much tension because you're attracted to that person and there's so much tension. And it's like, 
We can't control that. <laughs> we no, can't. You can't. Oh, done. <laughs> and it's like the day you've been waiting for. So it's like the extra excitement. Yes. It's like. And uh, like, and, and again, as a guy, it's like, because you're looking at this woman, and again, we're talking, we're discussing our wives, and you're like, "Yo, I'm so attracted to this woman." Even before you say hi to her, even before you introduce yourself, you're like, "I would." I mean, you think about this in general, but you're like, "I would love to just sleep with her, just because oh, yeah. I find her so attractive." And then, you know, you become friends, whatever the case may be. Then it happens, and it happens fast. <laughs> Yo, that's you know you know the girl women and everything crack on guys and everything like girls like they're saying it's sensitive. They got the man. It does take longer. Like they can they can sit there multiples. Yeah. You know, guys, it's like we're so sensitive, man. If it happens, it happens. It, it'll be yeah. you're you're lucky. We don't like this. We have good times. We we can go distance. Oh, there yeah. is some you like. Listen, <laughs> it's been like two days. You keep saying like you're tired and. <laughs> No, it just touched. You're like, oh, no, you know, it, it, it's not. It's it's a disadvantage for guys. It's not fair. We can't be a game twenty four. You know, every day. It's like we're just so we overdo the excitement. I think. You know, you know what it is though. It's because it's like with with which I know this is going against the movie again, but real quick, what it is is it's like you know when you start going, you're just like bam, bam, bam. You start going yeah. hard because of her reaction. Yeah, and feed because off of, it, yeah. Because of her, so we feed off that. And it's not even an ego thing. It's just like I want to please her, and then you keep kind of going. It's like, oh shit, I gotta slow down, <laughs> or else this is gonna be done. There's that, and then there's like, depending on the situation, the position, or whatever. When she's moving, doing her moves, you're like, yo, listen, calm yeah. down. Yeah, yeah, you gotta calm your ass down. <laughs> calm down, or this is gonna be over very, very, very quickly. <laughs> And it's it's true. What happens is they're enjoying themselves. Either way, they're enjoying themselves, and they don't listen. So then they're just like, they're just like, uh. <laughs> yep, you're like, uh oh, I warned you. <laughs> the funny thing is, I was like, don't add. Did you do that? And you're just, you try to lie, like, no. <laughs> you're like I don't know what you're talking about. And then it's just like, all right, you got to give me a few minutes. Let me catch my breath, and I'll go back at it. Like me, this might be two EMI. If I have a good buzz or a good high, I'm good. I'm, yeah. I'm good. But sober me? Shit. Because <laughs> you, you want to know why? I think this is my theory on the buzz and high. A lot of people are like, oh, it's not long when I'm drunk and high. I think the reason is because when you're kind of high and drunk, you get a tunnel vision. But you're also, it's not a tunnel vision. It's also, it's kind of like a um, squirrel. Yeah. So your mind gets off it many times during it. Even when you're still going, you still start thinking of something else. So it's not like and this right hyping here, it up. This right here, people, this is how this connects with this. This is talking about going steady. Like this is what we think of when we talk about going steady or will you marry yeah. me? Will you be my girl? Like this is, you know, I'm not saying it's all about that, but it's because it's obviously not. No, especially at thirteen, you can be. They can. You can sit there and be boyfriend girlfriend for like three fucking years. I and mean, just kissing through three even, years. You know what I'm saying? Three, four. Like, yeah. Don't like, get me wrong. I would love to go. I, I'm very attracted to my wife. I love my wife to death. I think she's the most beautiful woman in the world. I would love to go out every single day, every single night. But I don't have that fucking energy all the time. No, we're not young bucks no more. <laughs> it, <laughs> like you're, it, Jesus. It, it's not even a young buck thing, honestly. Like. I look at it like I get up. I mean, now I, yes, I work from home people, but I still work. I get up every day at six o'clock now and she gets up at five o'clock in the morning. We have to take care of dinner and all this other shit. So it's like, by the time you're done with work and dinner and all this other, it's like, just, yeah, it's life, man. Life gets in way. It's not it, like yeah. jobless or just like a part-time job. You hang out 20%. Don't have no other shit to worry about. Yeah. So it is what uh, it is. It's, it's called, it's called relationships. People. Yeah, it's called love, too. It's called love. Just yeah. life, love, all that good stuff. There's lust still. There's still a lot of lust. Yeah. But, but anyways, uh, but that was my theory about that. I was just saying if I was in that position. So let's move on. From, <laughs> let's move on yeah, from that. Fine, let's move on. Okay, so what was the next thing? Okay, so they weren't basically steady. So she was like, basically, I'll protect you. Give him advice. Like, hit them hard. Like, if a bully messes you, you... Hit them harder. She said... Yep, hit them harder. 
she said hit him hard and he was like there's three of them she's like hit him harder yeah i liked and respected that because it's like for for example for me i know i've never been bullied i'm lucky enough i'm blessed enough i've never been bullied i've never been a bully but like i feel with the way i was raised by my parents and i don't know if it's a race thing or not because like i'm not trying to make this a racial thing but real quick like <clears throat> and you could add in on to this. Like my father would always tell me, don't start anything, but at the same time, don't let anybody start with you. My older siblings yep. would tell me the same thing. My older cousins would tell me, don't start anything. Even my mother to an extent would tell me that. I don't know if that's in the minority household or if that's in all households. I, I really don't, because I haven't grown up. Honestly, I think it's all about the parents. Um, there's some people, if you were a bully, you're going to want your kid to stick up for yourself fully, basically. Yeah. It's, like a, it's like a trigger. It keeps going generation to generation mine wasn't like that really um when i grew up so i was heavy set my whole life so i had people it wasn't really bullying because i was also a big dude like dude you push the limit i'm gonna smash your head against the wall mm -hmm. but i never went around bullied anybody i was the fun i got i got along with all so back in the day where what was the term clicks or some shit yeah you, got, you had the goths i was friends with Everybody. I'm the same exact, like the goths, the jocks, the skaters. Everything. Yes. I was cool with at least, let's say, four people from each type of clique. Exactly. And I was known as like, I was funny. I was always funny. I was always entertaining. Like I was, I always wanted to make people laugh and smile. All since I was a kid, and I do that now with this show. Yeah. So, so what I can give advice about bullying. So I never let it turn into a bullying. So when they try, so this is the thing. People are going to attempt it. So, like, for example, in high school, I don't know, ninth or 10th grade, I'd be walking to class, and someone would be walking by, I'd be like, damn, dude, what you, what you eat? I'm not the type of person to let them get to me and let them know. Like, you know how people, you put your head down or you cry? Yeah. I, I answered them. I was like, yo, I don't know, last night I had some pizza, and I, I just went with it. And they were like, yo, dude, what the fuck, man? And they just kept going. And the next day, I seen them in all, they didn't say nothing, because they know I'm going to go with it. Mm -hmm. So it's a perfect example, like how I said, me and my brother, like that's I think that's why I'm so used to it. Like I'm so witty. Like yeah. he'll say something and boom, 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 back and forth. See, you you know what it is though. Back because me and you, how old are you again? I will be thirty uh, eight in January. So we're four years apart, pretty much. Wait, or thirty seven. <laughs> I don't even fucking know, man. I'm fucking old. That's all I know. <laughs> well, uh, I'm about thirty four, but we're we're pretty much in the we're in the same era. What I'm getting at is, when we were growing up, kids would crack jokes on each other especially like amongst yeah. friends we grew up on cracking jokes on each other so you grow that tough skin yeah here's how it ties in with the movie the kid that was getting bullied didn't really have that tough skin but at the same time no. he was getting bullied like not only verbally but physically yes but us it wasn't bullying when we're you're cracking jokes amongst friends sometimes you gang up on a friend they crack jokes but it was still amongst friends and then every day somebody would get it but like it was just, with this movie, what I did, I liked, like, how he said the kid looked awkward and stuff, and he was, like, really white. I, they picked the perfect person for this role. I don't know if they put makeup on him or what. But because, like, this is, look, you're going to get picked on. Like, there's going to be people that are going to pick on you because you look different. Like, I know he was going to where he was in Sweden, so everybody was white there. But he's he always like, awkward, too. He was. He was, like, a loner for the most part. Yes. He have any friends. No. And it's, like, it's it's sad in a sense in the movie why then in real life because there's really people going through shit like that children going through shit like that and it's just like they just need that one like this movie is a good example in a sense of like standing it up for yourself because when he hit that kid in the ear with the stick yep he, set, he like sent the message right there they stopped fucking with him for a long time until pretty much the end of the movie yeah until their older brother got involved yeah but and another thing, you know, that dude, he took it. Like, um, and beforehand, it's like he knew he was going to get bullied. He, he let, he, he'd sit there and go, like, he'll answer him, no, I'm not. Yeah. And he knew something was going down. Like, he took those stick whippings. The one, well, the. Yo, like a like, man, yo, the legs, and they got pissed off him in the face. He was like, he kept his eyes closed. And he was just, he took that pain, yo. He took it like, yo, that, you could do it. Go ahead and don't bother me. Going into that, though, when he was getting hit in the legs, the one kid that was hitting in the legs was getting upset and, like, crying. Because he, the kid that was the one kid, like, it was, like, the one kid that was, like, the main bully. You could tell who always the main bully is. The prick, the super dick. 
then the, the other blonde haired kid that was hitting him in the legs, he didn't want to be a part of that. No, he did. Cause even at the end, he, he was on the bleachers crying. By the he, way, he survived. He did. I feel like with him, he was scared of getting bullied by those kids. So he was just there. With he, them. he was with them. Ride he, with me or be yeah, on the other side. He didn't have any issues with the one kid that they were bullying. Yeah. And then like, but again, what I'm getting at is like, as far as standing up for yourself, like don't let somebody push you around. Don't let somebody bully you. At the same time, I like how don't shoot up a school though. No, that's crossing the line, people. Punch Jesus, that's that's not standing up for yourself. <laughs> no, it, if somebody bullies, Jesus, no joke. I'm sorry to sit, laugh at no, that, no. but serious. If somebody Jesus, you and you like, I know people say run to an adult and tell an adult. But sometimes that doesn't that doesn't always do anything. Sometimes you gotta just ball up your fist and punch them right in the mouth. Punch them right in the mouth. Punch or them. if you had that one friend talk to, like yeah. they will give you advice and you can work out together. And if it comes down to, hey, your friend will go over there and knock the shit out of them. That, hey, sometimes you need that. <laughs> sometimes you need that. You know? girl said, hit, she said hit him. And he yep. said, three of them. He, she said hit them harder. And she also said, I will help you if you need Yep, it. yep. Which she shows later in the movie. Like she didn't just snap and said who did it and just killed them all right, right in the beginning. She was oh. telling him, hey, this is how you handle it. And it's a life lesson in a sense of like, again, going back to if you're getting bullied, which I think this is a good message for this movie. If you're getting bullied because the kid was getting bullied throughout the whole movie. I'm not saying kill. No, hell no. Don't kill. No, no, no. Stand up for yourself. I know people say go get an adult. You can only do so much though, because at the end of the day, you're still going to get bullied. Not always, but at times you're still going to get bullied. Oh, you went and got an adult. You're so blah, blah, blah. You punch somebody in the face. I don't care how tough the person is. You punch somebody in the mouth. Anytime they bully you, they know for a fact they're going to have a fight on their hands. Yeah. Win, lose, or draw, they're going to be like, you know what? I'm sick of this. If I go fuck with this person, I know I'm going to have to fight. I don't want to fight. I know yeah. for a fact I'm going to have to fucking fight. I don't yeah. want that. So my message to you guys is, I'm not saying go out there and pick fights and all that. Hell no. Don't. First of all, if you're a bully, fuck you. Don't bully anybody. Get help. Agreed. Go seek therapy. If you're a bully, go seek therapy because there's something obviously going on. Forget Start a gym. Buy something. Punch walls like normal fucking people. Don't take your aggression on other kids. Not only I wouldn't even say punch walls and destroy. Do some push-ups. Do something. Burn that energy out. Yeah. Jesus. Rub, beat your meat. Rub one out. Yeah, there one. you go. That's a good relaxer. <laughs> and back in the day, you had some energy. You had some water and like a snack. You mean you can rub out like five and within an hour. <laughs> Like, like, you know what? I'm, I'm going to go bully that kid. But before I do that, let me look at this playboy. Yeah, well, yeah there you go. You, you feel all relaxed. You forget your troubles. But all, all joking aside, though, first of all, don't bully anybody. If you're getting bullied, get help. That's one. If you have to punch somebody in the mouth, punch somebody in the mouth. Don't harm anybody as far as violently trying to kill somebody. Either If you're getting bullied or if you're bullying somebody. If you're bullying somebody, seriously, seek help. Figure out why you're doing this. Figure out that outlet of why you're doing this. Is something going on at home? Are you being bullied as well? Or is somebody pressuring you into this? Seek help because there's, there's really nothing cool about bullying. There's nothing funny about it. I know we're making jokes. Mm -hmm. We're trying. Well, what I do with this show and what I what James is doing with this is we're making, making jokes, yes, but that's what draws people in to listen to the message. And the message is, don't, seriously, don't bully. If you, somebody, if you see somebody getting bullied, man, woman, Child, adult, stand up for that person. End that Great. bullshit. And you know, you could, you might make a fucking lifetime friend just because you stuck up for somebody. Yeah. You might make a lifetime friend just by, say, say you are a bully and you're bullying somebody, and you know what, you go and get your help, or say that person helps you one way or another, and you might make a lifetime friend like that, and you might stop bullying. Which, again, if you're a bully, fuck you. Stop that bullying shit. Stop being a pussy because that's what you're being is a pussy because you're. What you're doing when you're bullying is you're picking on somebody you know that won't stick up for themselves or you know that can't beat you. Yep. So it's a power <laughs> thing. And I'll tell you, I'll tell you people this: for you, for the younger generation especially, Google Mike Tyson, YouTube Mike Tyson fights. I say this because this dude is a fucking beast, and he used to be bullied as a kid. You don't want that person to have that memory. Nope. You don't want Mike Tyson. Put it this way. Save me and Mike Tyson grew up together. I used to bully him. I don't want him remembering me. 
how he is <laughs> even now at 54 years true, old. True facts. Fuck that. Don't well, lose people. Well, that's the thing. He got into bullying. Uh, like he was getting bullied, and he took it. He he got into Some boxing fun. and shit. Yeah. So fighting. Well, before boxing, like he started fighting. Well, what fighting, happened? Yeah. He, he was he was like he was one of those people who has you know people collect pigeons. Yeah, yeah, he's obsessed with pigeons. He yeah. One of his birds, and he snapped. And I feel before you get to that point where you snap and react, and I don't mean snap and swing a punch, I mean snap and pick up a gun or do something crazy, you need to go get help. If you're being bullied, you really need to go get help. Like I'm trying to drill that message in. It might be less. Uh, then again, I don't know. Like Even with social media, if people are bullying you, report their accounts. This goes for anybody. Like, I don't, I, it, it, it really breaks my heart when I see people committing suicide because they're being bullied, especially with children. And there's nothing cool. There's nothing funny about that. And I know, again, it's getting a little morbid and a little deep, but I feel like I have to say this because it's on my mind right now. And I'm saying it more so because we're in this pandemic and people are on social media a lot more. People are on the computers a lot more. People are going to school from their, you know, from their fucking computers now because of this. I'm like, don't let social media be the death of you people. If you feel like you're being bullied on social media, Report the people's accounts that are bullying you, especially if they're talking about killing yourself. Definitely report that shit. That's one. And two, I'll say, if you feel like social media is really bothering with your mental health that much, get rid of it. Even if you get rid of it for six months, a year, two years, or for good, get rid of it. Don't let that shit fuck your fuck. Don't let that shit fuck up your mental. It's not that important. It's not shit. We grew up without social media. Do I enjoy it? Yes. I got off social media for about two years. The only, honestly, the biggest reason I came back to it was because of horror and the horror podcast, and I do enjoy it, but don't let it mess up your mentals. Take care of your mental just like you would take care of your physical. Great. Even more, I would say take care of your mental more than your physical because like, if your physical is off, you're out of shape or whatever, that's one thing. But if your mental is off and if you're mentally out of shape, and I don't mean like a mental disability. I mean, if you're mentally out of shape because of whatever reason, you might make a decision that you can't come back from. And that could be killing somebody or killing yourself. And obviously, you can't come back from killing yourself. So just kind of take care of yourself, people out there. I know, again, I know this is getting deep, but here and there, once we get on certain topics and certain conversations, for whatever reason, I like to throw those gems in there. And I'm throwing this gem in there because this movie, there's a lot of bullying going on. And there's Plenty of children. Yes, children. Fucking six, seven, eight years old up to fucking 19, 20 years old. Which I'm 34 years old, so I'm going to call you children if you're under 30. That are killing themselves because they're being bullied. Don't let that be you and don't let that be somebody you know or care about. Don't let that be a stranger. Again, if you see somebody getting bullied physically, mentally, just step in. Hey, leave them alone. Leave her alone. Stop. What's 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 going on with you? Why are you why are you doing this? Maybe you should get some help. Sit down, and have a conversation. Simple as that. Back to this movie again. <laughs> Let's get to this pool scene. Uh, yes, the pool scene. Which is another bullying scene. So the yes. pool scene, you see, um, what's his name again? Oscar. He's doing like swimming lessons or water aerobics. He's, he's trying to get weird in, shit, by the way. It's he's really weird. To get Remember how he was lifting weights at one point. So he's trying to get in shape and water yep. aerobics is a great way to get in shape. And the coach goes outside because the bully set a fire. Yep. A di uh, distraction. And the one kid, I don't, I felt like he was a part of it, but at the same time, he wasn't. He, he is like the blonde head kid, but to the next level, he was, the. you're doing this for me, but I think he really didn't want to do it either. It wasn't for him, though. It was for the other kid that had the thing on his ears. Remember, he's the one who got his ears split open. The kid's brother. Yeah. The kid's brother who got hit with the stick, he, his brother's getting revenge for him. Yeah. But the other kid who went there and talked to, like, told the coach there's a fire, he was part of the clique. He was. And I think he didn't want to be part of it either, kind of. I see yeah. it in his eyes. Because remember, now I remember a little bit earlier in, in the, the earlier pool scene where he's just like standing by the coach and he's doing something and he's talking with the kid back. He's talking with Oscar back and forth and like joking around with him. So later in the movie and this pool scene now where he's just like st stepping back like this, back yeah. and forth, and Oscar's laughing, he's doing it in the pool. And I'm just like, okay, cool. 
He ki- and then, you know, the brother comes in, the brothers come in, one of them kicks the radio in the water. And that's where all hell breaks loose. And he tells him, he's like, listen, I'm going to, he said, he pulls out a switchblade and he's like, pretty much, I'm going to give you a, a, a little nick or I'm going to poke your eyeballs out with this knife. You have to hold your breath underwater for three minutes. And he waves him in, which to me was weird that he came towards him. I know. Like, okay, I'm going to come. You could have just swam out and said, fuck you. Come and get me. Wait till the coach come back. And then, so he held, he holds him. But anyway, yeah. And the kid starts passing underwater. And then all of a sudden you see feet. Like you see feet going across the water like this. Which is cool. Then you see the head drop in. Drop in the water. And you see the arm fall in the water. That was dope. And then she pulls him out of the water, and then when she come, when um, El, Ellie pulls Oscar, Oscar. Out of the water, yeah, when Ellie pulls Oscar out of the water, you see the dead brother. You see the, the older brother dead. You see the younger brother dead, and you see the friend dead. And then you see the blonde haired kid just sitting there. I think he's sitting there like this with his hands down. He don't even know what's going on. He's still crying because yeah. he didn't want nothing to do with it. So it was so quiet and so quick. This girl just wiped through yep. everybody. So- now, which was a cool scene. Very cool fucking scene. And I love that there was some gore in this. My thing is, which was weird to me and strange, they leave on a train. His yeah. mother, or because he lives with his mother, but he goes to see his father every once in a while. Neither one, neither one of them, as far as what we've seen, were concerned and ask shit. Like, yeah, I think, I think, I think that's one of the things. I think is he had, like, the, the parents got divorced, basically. Mm-hmm. And I think there was a separation. Like, hi, mom. She didn't give a shit, really, that mm-hmm. much. Paid attention. The father is like, he's seen him once in a while, but then when he's there, father's friend comes over and they drink. Drink and smoke. So he's like, fuck you guys. And he's in love with this vampire girl. And he's like, I'll come with you. Yeah. Basically, that's how it ended. It's like, I will come with you. You saved me. I yeah. love you. I'm, I think- I'm coming with you. I think they help each other and save each other because they do. Yeah. Remember when the one guy going back to the one guy that goes to kill the girl. Yep. Was to kill the little girl. He saves her because remember he, he yells out. Yep. Remember he grab he grabs the knife because he was gonna stab the guy, and the guy like cracks the window open, cracks this the uh, whatever is covering the window to bring in the sunlight so he could see to kill the girl. <laughs> to kill the girl, and he's like, no. The little boy's like, no. And the guy looks back, and the girl attacks him. Yeah, she woke up and just, like, jumped on him. Yeah. Tore his neck that, apart. That was him saving her, and then she saves him in the pool. Yep. With him going with her, it's like they kind of were just like, you know what, we're there for each other. She's in, a, like, a box, like a suitcase. Because they do the, the train. app and slide. Yeah. Which, that's what brought me to, I wonder if she bites him later on. Like, You know, if there was a part two, that would be a, I don't want to, yeah, that's the part I don't get. No, because then he would be hungry. They wouldn't be able to help each other. They'd be going wild and just feeding. But they so she needs she needs like someone who's straight minded, like don't get the hunger. True, but at the same time, it's like. Well, they are love this one, these two. So you yeah. want them to live forever with you at the same age. So that's why I'm thinking. I mean, huh. this would have made a good book. This would have, if it's not a book, this would have made a very good fucking book. I'm, I'm curious. That might be a book. I wouldn't doubt it if there is a book. Amen. Honestly. But the, there should be, like... And the thing is, a lot of, I can see a lot of people complaining, like, oh, it wasn't, like, fast. It was kind of... It was slow, but it was still caught your attention. It was, yeah. like, it was like a horror, but mainly, like, a love story, kind of. Yeah. And again, this is this is why this is my favorite genre because literally it can go in any fucking direction. We we now me and you have done horror comedy, we've done the horror like the slasher shit, we've done the paranormal, I believe. Yeah, this All is like the above. horror, and it goes and it's a good one though. It's not like a cheesy, corny romantic movie. It's a it's a entertaining movie. This is what Twilight should have been. <laughs> Basically, I, and honestly, I love horror and everything. I hate Twilight. Oh. Twilight's not horror, though. I no. will admit, I read the first book. I did enjoy the first book, but I watched the first movie and I hated it. You want to know why it bothers me? The glitter? Vampires don't sparkle. No. What the fuck? It was... There, I, no. Uh, where, anyways. For me. I'm not going to shit on that because there's fans of it. But And there's and the werewolves look like just regular dogs? Yeah. 
you couldn't stick to the regular vampire of like werewolves where they stand on two legs, Mm-mm. like fucking beefed out. Nope. No, nah, they went to a regular dog, a wolf in the woods. But anyways, like you said, there's a lot of Twilight fans. I get it. It's like um, it's more like a fantasy like love story. Yeah. Weird love story, by the way. But let me get into that one. I'm just the wolf it. guy, mad old, falls in love with the baby that just gets born. Yep. Pedophile. But anyway. <laughs> but anyway, like this movie, it was a, it was a really good movie, and it was very, I liked it. Let me in. And for those, I know I'm doing this whole countdown thing or whatever. I can't. I feel like it would be cheating if I added this movie just because it's so similar to Let Me In, just like a foreign version of it. So I will not add this movie to my top ten, or I would add it to my top ten, which I have to go look back. I have to. I don't even think I've added anything in my top ten yet, have I? Summer Party Massacre. I think that was one. Um, one. I think you do. I think you have a few. I don't remember. And I'm too lazy to go back and look at other episodes, so I'm just gonna have to figure something out. I know I have a bottom. I know I have blood. Oh, you definitely got a bottom. Again, there's, again, with this bottom and with the top ten, the bottom ten for this year, it can't be a sequel and it can't be a remake. As far as like a remake that I'm well aware of, if it's a remake that I'm not aware of, that's one thing. But if it's a remake that I'm not aware of, that's another. And yeah, but this movie, I'm ready to jump into ratings. Um. I want to just give a real note real quick. People, because there's it's a foreign movie and subtitle, give it a chance. Some Hell foreign yeah. movies of are great. Just an example, like you mentioned earlier, Train to Basan, 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 wherever you want to say it. Train to Basan was amazing. Awesome movie. You got to read. Who cares? Get quiet time. You know, you sit there, pay yeah. attention to the screen and fucking read it. It and, is but, awesome. With I me. see some good ones. The original Grudges. You ever see the original grudges? I didn't, but I need to, but I will throw out another one. Battle Royal 1 and 2. It's like um, the Hunger Games, but way better. It's I didn't see those yet. I got to check those out. But you, you got to give it a shot, man. You got you to watch the foreign ones. I don't know if it's still on Netflix, but it used to be on Netflix. It's like uh, it's Asian, but it's, okay. yo, it's gory as shit. Like, nice. It's violent. Like how the Hunger Games was portrayed to be, that's what this but- one. How it would really be? <laughs> yeah, that's what this was. It was fucking amazing. Nice. Battle Royale, Battle Royale one and two. Go watch that. But anyways, okay, let's get back to the ratings. I just have to throw it out there because a lot of people just skip it. They're like, "Oh, yeah. I'm not reading that shit." I used to be one of those people, but now I'm like, I gotta stop doing this bullshit because I'm doing myself a disservice and I'm doing the podcast fans a disservice by not watching these awesome horror foreign films. They're amazing gems that just need to be watched, and they. Some of them, I'm not going to say every single one, but some of them go over the top to where it's like if there's an American version and a foreign version, the foreign version yeah. blows that shit off the fucking water. Yeah, their FCC is like totally different than ours if they even have FCC. Mm-hmm. Like they can get away with shit we can't. So it, it, sometimes that makes it better. Like even the kill scenes, like you're like, holy shit. Yep. You're like, you know, it's like, so give it a shot. Give it a chance. Definitely, Trust definitely me. Give it a shot. And I'll say, um, yeah, give it a shot. And going into this movie, I just thought of the rating because I love this candy. From a negative 10 to a positive 10, how many Swedish fish? <laughs> oh, okay. I got you. I see where you're going with this. How many Swedish That's fish would you give this movie? That was a good one. Okay. You know, I like it. I. It's been a while, but I don't know if I like this one better than the uh, American version? I don't know. This one might lean a little bit better. I'm not 100% sure on that. This one might be a little bit better, I think. Just because the characters are more, like you said, the uh, the actor, like they chose the perfect kid for it. Yeah. Um, and it wasn't like bad acting. I thought they were pretty good. I don't know. I, I think I'm going to get this. I might break my rule. Oh, shit. And do a half. So I think I'll give it a 7.5. Nice. Because I think it's almost 8 worthy. Really close. Like, it's like I really want to say 8. But then I'm like, I don't know, maybe. Then, so I'm just going to say 7.5. I'm going to give it a solid 8. And Fair, okay. 8 Swedish Fish because, like, you have the bullying in there. You ha- And I'm not 
I'm not cool with bullying, but just hear me out. You have the bullying in there, which is normal for school kids, especially like the the, the awkward looking kid or whatever you want to call it. You have that moment where somebody finally, where the kid finally stands up for himself. You have the moment where somebody stands up for him. And you have the moment where the geeky, nerdy kid gets the girl that he was like really madly in love with and she feels like the same way about him. So that you, you have all this stuff and then it's throwing, it's like a horror, it's like a ho- horror movie to an extent. You have the cool vampire stuff, you have some cool kills, you have the blood. And I mean, again, I, I really enjoyed this movie. I can't say I would rush back to watch it. And that's not saying that it's a bad movie, but it's just one of those movies where it's like, I don't know. Again, going back to like the Friday the 13th, the Halloweens, the Nightmare on Elm Streets. I can go back, rush back to watch those, but with this, I'm not saying I would never watch it again, but I wouldn't watch it. Like I probably won't watch it for the rest of this year. I'll admit that. I 100% admit that. I probably won't watch it for the rest of this year. And really quick, I want to do th- this year. I want to do 31 days of Halloween. My wife and I were talking about this. Mm. And what I'm thinking is, depending on what time me and her watch these movies, I should do a podcast on them. Oh. So if we watch them like right after work around like five or six, as long as it's not super late, we record between eight or nine start time. Let's say if it's me and you, three movies I was thinking of as like um, was it three or two? Well, trick trick or treat. You've seen that? Movie. Love it, love it. With Sam, love it. I think it's one of the best. Was what are they called? Uh, that one's trick or treat. No. Oh, yeah. anthologies, yeah. Anthologies. Anth- Love it. That's one of my favorites. It is, yep. As a matter of fact, look at my mouse pad. Oh, that's dope. Nice. There you go. I think I got it from one of my horror boxes. So I would say that movie is like set in stone every freaking... Ho- I mean, I'd watch it any time of the year, but every October I have to watch that movie. The original Halloween, and I'm going to throw sense. in Rob Zombie's Halloween, the first one. Ooh, okay. I really, really enjoyed that. Interesting twist. Okay. And, and after that, like, th- it'll be those three movies, at least for this year, it'd be those three movies, but I think Trick or Treat and not, the original Halloween would, like, always be, like, every year you have to watch that. And then, like, the rest would either be just random horror movies or Halloween-themed horror throughout the month. Makes sense. But I mean, like, more... Not, I don't mean, like, no disrespect. I don't mean, like, the Hocus Pocus. Like, no, please, no. I mean, real, like... That's Disney family. Yeah, I mean, like I, that's not even horror. Com- that's not even a horror comedy. Don't even put that in the category. Yeah, I mean, I, even like it doesn't have to be an anthology, but just like more, like if, I don't care if it's low budget, high budget, whatever. But I feel like Thirty One Days of Halloween. And what I want to do is, I was talking to my wife about this the other day. Is maybe what month are we in August? Between August and September, the rest of this month and next month, just pick maybe Thirty One Days. Because I can put it in my calendar on my phone, just like 31 different movies, put it in my calendar, set like a time and date to watch these movies, and just fucking watch them. Even if there's, I mean, there's, there might be some days where we have to watch two movies in one day. That doesn't mean we can't review them still Monday through mm-hmm. Friday, whatever it's going to be, or Saturday, Sunday. But it'd be cool to do 31 days of Halloween and then do try, keyword is try, to watch 31 movies in, in October, and then do 31 podcasts in October. So you're talking about one a day. Yes. For the whole month. I mean, unless there's like a weekend where we're just like, we could bang out like, say, three or four, but still put them out. Oh, <laughs> I see what you're saying. Okay. You know what I mean? But I'm, like right now, what I'm trying to do is like the episodes I have now, I'm trying to get them all out. My goal, I'm not saying this will happen, people. My goal is to try to get all these episodes I have out now. I got to see what else I have in store, but I believe I have like, I think um, I have like two weeks out. I'm like two weeks out, but I still have shit to go. But if I can do this the way I want to do it, I want to try to get everything out. If I can, then I might drop extra episodes, which, yes, I'm throwing this out there. I might drop extra episodes to get everything out before October. Maybe. Keyword is maybe, because at the same time, I need stuff for October to come out. And, you know, but, like, say, if we record October, like, I need something to drop October 1st. I don't know, though, because I don't need to. You know what? Never mind. Never mind. Scratch that idea. I know I'm recording. Because I was thinking about dropping, like, a recording and then dropping the episode, but I feel like I can still do my Tuesday, Thursday. Mm. 
I'll figure something out for that. Maybe I'll drop an extra episode or two during how like so yeah, how would you do that for the thirty one days of Halloween? So you will record and drop it for each day? I'll one have, every day? I'll so have, people stay on point with the holiday? Hmm. The Halloween? I you know the the only way that, that would work is if I started it in uh September. Ah and dropped it in October. Because I'm only saying that because, like, say, like September first, I need something. September second, third, fourth, and so on and so forth. So basically, September you have to like almost double it up to get yeah. your normal shit out. But I don't think I could. <laughs> that's a Ooh, lot. That's a lot. That's a lot. What? what well, here's what I'll do. I'm gonna drop. What I'll do is I'll drop something like say, definitely on Halloween, one maybe two episodes, and then just record as much as I can during that month. And just drop them when I can drop. You know what I mean? Just drop them when I can drop them. 31 days of Halloween. As far as mm. Halloween or whatever. I'll figure something out, but I like. Or what about if you do. Because for me. Like quick, like uh, say like a six minute quick review every day. Like a quick video. Like, oh, 31 on Halloween. We're on day 30. What, what I could do is a quick video of here's what we're watching. Here's what we're reviewing tonight. And that's, you know what I mean? Like 31 days of that, which I could do that. Like, here's what I'm doing. Here's the movie we're watching. Let's say we're doing Trick or Treat. Me and James. I'm watching this with my wife. Da 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 da. Uh, we're going to have a movie review. It'll be out when it comes out. But at least I have this, this, boom, boom, boom. You know what I mean? Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> Maybe I'll do that. I have no idea, people. If you guys put it this way, if you guys have any ideas, let me know because dropping 31 episodes in October. It sounds cool. It sounds fun. It sounds awesome. A lot of work. A lot of work. And you're talking about the editing too. If it wasn't with the editing, if you just went from however you yeah. did it, it might be a little bit easier. But but still, it's a lot because like I, again, it would be different if we were still in the quarantine portion of where we weren't working for the whole month of October. That's oh, like, definitely. Man, I can knock out like. Yeah, because then I'd like, man, movies are dead. Yeah, yeah. Let's watch this movie this morning. I can watch it again later on with my wife. Let's watch the movie this morning. Review it. I'll edit it and put it out by this evening or tonight. Yeah. But like, like on a normal day, like we're during the quarantine, we could have, I could have watched one because I wake up at five. I could have watched a movie. We could have done one at like noon or one. Watched <laughs> another movie and do another one at late yeah. at night. You would have knocked two a day right there. At least. I mean, uh, shoot, I, I could get up earlier too and fucking watch a movie and stuff. But again, we'll see, people. Uh, I will say this: I do want to watch thirty-one movies in October. I want to start watching more horror movies in general, but I do want to check movies in October. And then, like, I want to drop because there's four weeks in a month. That's eight episodes. Maybe I'll try to drop thirteen episodes in October. Maybe. Oh, by the way, real quick thing. This podcasting is slowly it's an excuse to get my wife to watch it. That's she's good. Been, I've been noticing because I was watching it. That's she's good. been eyeing it. She's watching and following along. That's good. And I'm like, one of these days, you're gonna be on board. Yep. <laughs> you're gonna be you're gonna be a horror fan. I was gonna say this is important this is an important thing because his wife isn't a horror fan and he's oh. slowly working. She grew, she's not a TV person at all much. So she was more of a reading. So just her getting to watch a movie, like she never seen like I, you name movies. And she's like, I never seen that. And you're like, you want to like slap her? Like, what the fuck you mean? Never seen. That. <laughs> it, and I'm it, talking about regular movies, like yeah. classics, like old school, like I, Dirty Dancing and shit. You're like, wait, you never seen what? I I I get where you're coming from though, because it's like there's a lot of movies just like holy shit. I, I mean, there's plenty of movies I never seen that are considered classics, of course. But when it's like, you've never seen any of these movies at all, this whole collection, there's like 10,000 movies. But if she likes to read, that's awesome if she likes to read. But in your favor, we all love spending time with our significant others. Yep. You, hey, let's spend some time with you. Let's sit down and watch a movie. What do you want to watch? Thanks, Killing. <laughs> no. No, that one, no. She looked at me with the weirdest face of what the what the fuck are you watching? Gosh, that that won't go down. I had to throw Thanks Killing in there. So, oh man! Which, by the way, I am doing. Th- it might be one more episode of Thanks Killing. I already did two episodes of it, but one more episode of a movie of Thanks Killing, which will be coming out on Thanksgiving. So, oh. I have one person who wants to be a part of that horror gamer. 
he's posted in my group all the time. Yeah. Yep. Anybody else wants to be a part of this movie review for Thanks Killing, which, yes, there's going to be some fucking background. As a matter of fact, in my head right now, anybody that's involved in this episode, see how this is going back and forth with, you know, with this. Yo, that would be crazy. <laughs> it's going to be your face on the turkey. That would be great. So who that's going to be awesome. Holla at you, boy. It depends on the day you, you film it. I might be in there. I'll film it whenever. Like I'll film it November first if I have to. Either way, it's coming out on Thanksgiving. On Thanksgiving. There you go. On Thanksgiving. I, I might be in that one then. I I'll, might. I might join. I'll record it in October. It doesn't matter when I record it because that one will be coming out on Thanksgiving. Gotcha. Like, that's just like that's my one of my. It's my favorite horror comedy. It's one of my favorite horror holiday movies. As crazy as that may seem. No, it's like I found that on accident. Like we talked about this many times. It's and on- I was dying, and I, I I went around everybody I knew. I got multiple friends to watch it, and they liked it. Yes. And they didn't blame me. I was like, listen, look this shit up and just watch it. You got to put your mindset. It's the stupidest shit. Turn your brain off. Turn your brain off, but it is awesome. I'll, matter of fact, I'll say this to you guys. For thanks killing, for those of you who are like, hey, it's, if you're somebody who likes to, you know, Take some shots, have a little sip, have some drinks and watch the movie, or have a smoke and watch the movie. Fucking entertaining. I watch it sober. I and do I, too. I think the last time I watched it, I was drinking. That's besides the point. I love that fucking movie. I think it's hilarious. It's so cheesy and so corny. It's so perfect. It is. It, and the first line of the movie is the best first line ever. I'm not going to spoil that for you. Those of you who haven't seen it yet, go out and watch it. It's on Tubi. Thanks, Killing. Thanks Killing Part 3 is also on Tubi. I'm not a big fan of Thanks Killing Part 3. But Thanks Killing, the original Thanks Killing, is, they're both on Tubi. Tubi is a free app, which is tons and tons and tons of horror gems. And as soon as we're done with this top 50 list, I might just do like a Tubi. I mean, we might just knock some Tubi movies out. Some Ooh. Tubi movies. Because there's some... Interesting. Movies. And with that segment, which I've said this before, that... Second, like this is the top fifty whatever movies that you haven't seen. That one will be called Two B or not Two B, but spelled T U B I, and I might even throw something in the thingy to maybe ah. have it in the background somehow. I'm gonna have it in the background somehow. I know I'm saying this out loud to you guys. I've said this in my mind to myself plenty of times. I just haven't done it yet, but I have like a Two B logo in the background with the movie poster with our faces in the movie poster or something funny in the movie poster. Two B or not Two B. That'd be funny. That'd be that'd be that's a good one. Because Tubi has a shit ton. Oh, hell yeah. Shit ton of horror movies. Yeah. That's a free app. That's a great app to have if you're a horror fan. Hell yeah. Too. Like, a lot of people are into, like, the Shudder and everything. I understand that Shudder is just meant for, like, horror. But if you're looking like, Netflix and everything, you're like, oh, they need to put more horror movies on oh, here. Tubi. Go to fucking Tubi. You're gonna and you will movies. see. Just type in horror. You'll, no. That thing will light up. Again, one of my favorite... As a matter of fact, I, I do have one movie on... That I remember right now that I'm thinking of. The movie Intruder. That's on Tubi. The that's a good movie. Flash in the grocery store. Right now, that's my number one on top ten list. There you go. That's what it was. I couldn't think of it. You do have one on there. Yeah, there it I, is. For the first time this year is Intruder. I yep. can't rework my list. I would ask Alexa, but Alexa. Hi. Hi there, sir. Dirty. There you go. Yes. I got to mess with that more to figure out this list thing and talk to her off camera, off scene, and, you know, fix that. Because well, one time, me and, you, me and her were arguing for about 10, 15 minutes. Yeah, it was. it was. I felt uncomfortable. I did, too. I thought I had, like, cops are going to show up, domestic, everything. Oh, it was weird. But, yeah, people, seriously, download Tubi. It's a great app. And another thing I want to start doing is, like, when, I, when we watch movies as far as, like, on an app that's free, I'll say – like, this movie right here was on Hulu. If you have Hulu, watch it. I'm going to post the link if it's a Tubi. Only if it's, like, a Tubi app or something like that, though. I'm not going to post it if it's, like, a Hulu app and all that. Because then you got to download it and pay for it. But if it's a Tubi app, I'm going to start posting that in the link. I think I did that for the Bullshit Blood Lake movie, which is – that episode is out, which I got to go back and listen to that eventually. I can't I can't watch myself. I want to because that, I know we trashed should, it so you bad. Should, you should just – you got to try it, man. I don't even remember what I said. That's how bad. <laughs> really quick, like I haven't listened to my episodes in a while, but I used to listen to my episodes all the time and just laugh because it's like 
I haven't heard them in so long. Like my brother, this is back when my brother used to edit for me. I haven't heard them in so long. It's like I gotta hear what we were discussing. And I only hear it from the conversation. And then like when I edit now, I really don't do any cuts, so I don't really have to listen to the episode too much. I've cut shit here and there out for certain episodes for reasons people behind the scenes know why. But uh, anyway, like I don't really cut anything out. I don't cut anything out at all, audio wise or visual. I just kind of just do my little thing, add little things in there, which I want to learn more about that too. But so when I'm editing, I'm not really listening to the episode. I'm just like, okay, I know everything sounds good. Everything looks good. Let me just add my little things in here and go from there. But you know, so I might start listening to myself again, like starting maybe next week or this week. I don't know. I'm actually just start playing these episodes right because they're on YouTube now, so I can just play it right on my yeah. or on Spotify and just look. Because I know I'm gonna laugh my ass off, and I love to laugh, and I'm just like, why not? Especially for movie reviews, certain interviews too that are funny, but movie reviews are always funny because they always go crazy. It is very yeah. off topic, random shit like we did yeah. today. But another thing I will say really quick before we end this is there's a lot of. There's a lot of gems in this podcast, and it didn't always start out like that. But now, like the more, it just happens. It's not like we, when me and James record, for example, we don't say like, "Here's what we're gonna discuss." Like when me and James are gonna record, well, hey, what movie you wanna do? Let's do this movie at this time, and that's it. Like that's it as far as the discussion goes. As far as like when certain shit comes out, like about the bullying shit we went on for a tangent yeah. for and stuff like that. That just happens naturally, and I feel like yeah. it's important to happen because I feel like it's just certain things that people need to hear, no matter what age you are, and just kind of get that kind of, um, again, going back to the Breakfast Club, Charlamagne and the God, putting the weed in the bag or putting the medicine in the candy, pretty much meaning you, I mean, putting the medicine, putting the weed in the bag is kind of like building up small to, you know, grow your empire, which I want the whole research of the empire to be huge one day. Mm-hmm. Putting the weed, the, putting the medicine in the candy, or putting the candy in the medicine, whatever, whatever. Putting the medicine in the candy, that's what it was, is like, it's going to be entertaining, but you're also going to get that medicine or that gem you need or that gem that somebody might need to get them through that day or through that hard time. And it could be the laughter or it could be that serious moment, that serious point. Because I've had people on here who've had issues that they discuss on this podcast as well as talking about horror. And I feel like my platform has become more important because of that. Not like, as far as like, like I do this because I love it. I love horror. I love just talking horror with friends, family, and random horror fans. I love entertaining people. I love I love to make somebody laugh or smile and make their day better. And I feel like at the very least, even if you're listening to an episode that doesn't necessarily have a gem in it, like some like an important message, you're having that getaway for however long the episode is, 45 minutes, an hour, two hours, three hours, four hours, whatever the case may be, you're having that getaway from your problem, your issue, to where you, maybe you're listening to the episode, and you're, at the end of the episode, you maybe you figured out that problem or solved that issue, and you're just like, you know what, I'm, I was, it's not, life is not all that bad. I want to keep fighting. I want to keep going. Or just whatever the, ca- whatever the case may be. I'm not, it doesn't have to be that dark. It could just be like, hey, I just want to listen to something fucking funny. Mm-hmm. And entertaining. I want to listen to something ignorant, and this is the this is the show. <laughs> you get ignorant, you get entertainment, you get gems, you get everything. One of these episodes gonna make you cry one day, which I hope it does in a good way. You're welcome. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> but on that note, thank you again for coming on here, James. No problem. Had a great fucking time as usual. Always. Um. So all my listeners out there, to the listeners out there, you know, again, you guys, you guys know now, James is. Of another one of my fucking um, co-hosts. But what I was going to say is I have a Horror Search 30 group. Go in there. Feel free to share anything and everything horror-related, including your own stuff. Just be involved in the conversations. I have a Horror Search 30 page on Facebook. The group, again, share anything and everything horror-related, including memes, pictures, videos, YouTube videos, your own podcast, whatever. As long as it's horror-related, it's cool. If it's not horror-related, it's going to get deleted. Horror Resource Study Facebook page that's strictly for the podcast. Anything that I drop as far as podcast episodes, that's going strictly to the page. Yes, it'll be on YouTube and all my other streaming platforms, but as far as when I share it on the Facebook, it's going on the page. I'm not putting it in the group anymore because I need more love in the page. And 
it's just that's where you're gonna see my updates of like what I'm doing, whatever the case may be. Which I do, I do share that in the group. I'm watching a certain movie, or when cons come back and all that kind of stuff. Um, what else? What else? Horror Star Thirty on um Facebook again. Like I said, the group and the page. If you're gonna be on this podcast, shoot me an email, horror dot thirty again. That's horror dot thirty at gmail dot com. You come on and review a movie with me and James, or come on an interview with me. Whatever the case may be, me and James, or me and one of my other co-hosts, or just me, whatever the case may be, which we do want to do a podcast with some people, which would be fun and fun. It would be fun. And then, like I said, interviews, random horror chats, anything horror-related is welcome on this show. That's horror with sir sturdy, horror with sir dot sturdy. Sorry, horror with sir dot sturdy at gmail dot com. Um, shit. If you're somebody who has a horror store. Or you make horror things, horror items, and you want some ad space, hit me up. We'll talk about something, and then you can have some ad space on my show. I'll do a little thing for you, 30 seconds to a minute. I'll even do like a little promo. I'll either do something where I do a cut, you know, cut the episode in half and kind of throw that in the middle, or just throw something out there during the episode if I have your item. But again, hit me up. We'll talk about that. Uh, I have a Twitch channel, horror underscore with underscore star underscore sturdy, and I promise you guys, within the next, well, by the time this episode comes out, hopefully I'm already recording, but I'll say, as of now, August 11th, 2020, within the next two to three weeks, I'll start streaming again, even if it's just on the weekends, and yeah, we'll see what happens. Um, I'll be stream. I think I'll stream a lot more once it's cooler. Because I'll have my play, I'll bring my PlayStation back up to my area in my attic where I record, and I'll help hook up my capture card and all this good stuff so you can like see me with my background of the game and all that good fun stuff. Right now, my PS4 is in my room because it's cooler down there. It's not too bad tonight, but I'm just saying in general. But yeah, and I think that's it. You got my Facebook, you got my email, you got my Twitch, my YouTube channel, Horror Star Story on YouTube, of course, and then anywhere you listen to podcasts. That's uh, iTunes, Podbean, Google Play, Spotify, Stitcher, and anything else in between. You can hear me. Again, Horror Research 30. And like I said, one last time, if you want to be a guest, email me, horrorresearch.30 at gmail.com, and we can make something happen. Thank you all for watching. Thank you all for listening. Again, people. If you see somebody getting bullied, stand up for them. If you're getting bullied, stand up for yourself. If you're bullying, get help. Figure out why you're doing this. And let's just try to treat each other a lot better. Again, that's my gem for the day. Let's treat each other a lot better, no matter what race, gender, sexual orientation, all that stuff. That shit doesn't matter. We all fucking bleed the same color blood. Treat each other better. Enjoy some horror. As always, I'll see you in your nightmares. And fuck you to Nicolas Cage. That's not bullying. I just don't like him. <laughs>